Today on the program, we kick off the summer blockbuster extravaganza by ragging on Stan Lee's The X-Men. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Zedek. Eric Siska. Sean Weiner. And we hate movies. Welcome to We Hate Movies on the Sideshow Network. Thank you for tuning in to what is the kickoff of our annual summer blockbuster extravaganza. Hashtag SBE 2016, if anybody is talking about it on the internet. Uh, Yeah, this week, let's get right into it. Brian Singer's X-Men The Last Stand from 2006. Oh, no, you're wrong. Uh, It's Brett Ratner's. Oh, you're right. Entire problem. You're totally right. We all dreamed that it was totally right. Oh wow, what a total! Like, don't you just want it to be that though? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because he's making all these new ones now, right? He's well, he didn't do that first class, but they got him back for whatever it's called, Days of Future Past. He kind of ejected Matthew Vaughn from the seat. He's like, yeah, I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) He left to do that uh, Superman as a divorcee father. Uh, uh, Superman. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I like that movie. I like it more than every other Superman since. <laughs> yep. No, it's it's an okay movie. It's a total. I haven't watched that movie again in a long time. But like, I think Brian Singer makes good superhero movies. Oh yeah, I love Valkyrie. <laughs> 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 so this is a famously like. Uh, this is probably my most anticipated and most disappointed I've ever been for a movie because like the end of. X Men Two, which is still kind of one of my favorite movies, like, like in the favorite top... superhero movies, or like of all oh, movies. I think it's a top thirty of all movies. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You Look can at wedge. Yeah, I feel it's fair to wedge that. I mean, thirty no. fucking movies. Come yeah. on, I, it's, it's, <laughs> and not like the best movies I've ever seen, but my favorite movies that I've gone back. Well, we're to. we're talking like twenty nine, right or thirty. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it, it's it's actually two, but I put thirty in there just to make <laughs> myself feel a lot better. No. Uh, but like at the end of that, it's like, oh my god, the phoenix is gonna happen! It's gonna be the phoenix! Oh shit, they lit up that pond or whatever. <laughs> that was that was. Like, Why does it look like a bird at the end? Like just, because but because the phoenix is a bird. Like like that's. The, well, I understand that the phoenix but, is a bird, but like, but like does she? I mean, that's like a phoenix bat signal in that lake. But that's kind of like how it works. She's usually like standing in all these flames, uh-huh. and the flame is in like a bird. Oh, form. I see, I see. And what's so like? I think what's great and nerdy and wonderful about the phoenix saga is that it's x-men go to space yeah. and somehow it's still kind of good it's not great but it's no. good enough for like comic nerds to be like no i love the phoenix saga. well so there's there's no space in this movie so that no! gets, that gets fucked then you're huh? be- i think you're better off leaving the space out of it because now, it's kind of one too many things now let's just go to the comic book encyclopedia here where which is, is steve say <laughs> no, i've been called week. that on the internet enough i, I feel like i have to relinquish <laughs> that title <laughs> no i'm just curious i mean wh- what are they doing in space with this flaming bird she's like a <laughs> celestial the phoenix is like a celestial being that like possesses jean gray mm-hmm. and then she goes Wait, so she so it's like an alien yes it's like oh a- so it's not like a split personality no, like it's not that- like she's a two-faced woman I which is what this movie's all based on. Oh yeah, that's what I thought it was. So, so it's it, or, or is it like a god person? Yeah, it's like a god thing that gets inside of her, and it makes her. She dies for a bit. She comes back as an evil thing. She kills like a, a planet or two, and then goes on like a oh, space man. trial. And then these space pirates get involved, and it's awesome. One of those Whoa. space pirates, by the way, Cyclops's father. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah, Corsair. One of the dumbest things. The fact that Cyclops's father has to be a space pirate. <laughs> <laughs> but does that supposed to say then that like? Does that say that Cyclops like isn't of Earth? No, he's like a, an Earth guy. He's kind of like a, a Star Chris Lord. Pratt. Yeah, oh like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like a more Errol Flynn Star Lord, and he like What's hangs out with, like reptiles. Ooh, people. I'll take it. What are the space pirates called? Star Jammers. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. man! Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Man. Star Jammers is like the name of like a shitty '90s like traveling roller skating team or something. <laughs> or We're like the Star Jammers. Or like the band that they made in a TV show. Like if yep. Hey Dude started a band, it would be called <laughs> the Star Jammers. Or like the um, the actual name of the good guy basketball team in Space Jam. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> They're I like called that idea. the Star Jammers, but they never reference it. 
Uh, hey, Ted, we're kicking you out of the Star Jammers because you have a real big Coke problem. <laughs> Our manager, Mr. Ernst, has asked us to ask you to leave. I just feel like everybody's got a Coke problem on the Star Jammers, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to. You're in a traveling band called the Star Jammers. Um, but so that's what that is. But I, I, I was super excited about this movie. And then... Because was, that was the biggest, like, fat guy tugging on your sleeve mo- moment in all so of tugging movies. Tugging on your sleeve. I because, didn't know like, where that was going. <laughs> any, <laughs> any movie, any, any superhero movie you see with, like, mixed public, there's that, like, little thing for the fans. And everyone's like, oh, my God, it's the Phoenix. Or, oh, my God, that's Silker's card. Oh, my God, that's, like, that's Gambit's name on a computer. Like, you know what I mean? Man, like, all that oh, cr- my God, that's Gambit's name <laughs> on a computer. That's an X-Men 2 as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just. We never uh, never got there, huh? Never got there. We but... got there in that uh, X Men Origins Colin Wolverine. Are you sh- uh, wait, we sure did. Gambit's in that, <laughs> dude. Yeah. For like three minutes, Taylor Kitsch plays him. He like farts in front of Wolverine in an alleyway. Oh, great! And that's the end of the movie. I think he's doesn't his bow turn into like a helicopter or something, and he like flies away. Something I'm like that. Sure. <laughs> Not like Mary Poppins' umbrella, but it has some sort of like gadgetry to he it. He has no like Cajun accent. No. Or he has none of that. And he, um, well, he Taylor o- Kitsch has a hard enough time covering up that Canadian accent. <laughs> he just wears a trench coat and his yeah, name is Gambit. <laughs> that, uh, whole, that whole X Men Origins Wolverine movie is like the, the laziest writing because it's like that, that has the famous uh, uh, Wolverine saying, uh, move out of the way, bub, to a fat man. The fat man says, "Did you call me blob?" And that's how the blob <laughs> got his name. Oh, you're to- Oh, I forgot uh, about that one, man. That what movie a fucking stink fucking fest. sucks. That- <laughs> now, Steve, where's that? For- where's that? Is that twenty eight? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's cruel. <laughs> That is my least cool. favorite movie of all time. Uh, but yeah, right, no, that's what I was getting at. This is the worst. That that one's the worst. That's the worst. Wolverine the Origins. Worst, I feel. And but this was more disappointing because a it came out before X Men Origins and like at that point X Men One is a really good movie and I think X Men Two is one of the, uh, AFI's top thirty movies. I forget. <laughs> I think that's what you're getting at. Those the idea that this was the first time we realized that an X Men movie could be bad. Yeah, right. you know, because we were riding high on those two and then it was like, oh fuck you, Brip. Ratner and your big try- butt book. I was trying to remember this. <laughs> when did everyone? And we'll go around the horn here because I, I I remember my moment. When was when did you check out of this movie? Like, oh fuck this! Like, this is not a good movie because in the beginning you're like, oh, it's another X Men movie, and it kind of feels that way for at least a little bit. Yeah, I think for me, right around the time that uh, one of my favorite X Men. Uh, Beast was ruined for me. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> Kelsey Grammer just walks in and just what a stupid oh, looking man. thing. No, that's when I perked up in my seat. Really? <laughs> I, oh, I don't know what a beast is, but look at that. <laughs> Kelsey my, Grammer. My pinpoint moment is when they're in the when they're on the battlefield and that like here's the X Men. Yeah. And they're fighting, but it's really the, the danger room. Yeah. And they do like this uh they look out. And uh, Wolverine sees light ab- oh, yeah. beyond the smog, and he go- looks at Colossus and is like, give me a toss. And, <laughs> and at that moment, a bunch of things happen that are terrible, including Storm saying, Wolverine, we work as a team, but what Wolverine is doing is teamwork. He's yep. saying, you <laughs> throw me there. I'll- <laughs> what more do you want, Aurora? <laughs> And then he goes flying beyond, and then a whole fight sequence happens off screen, uh-huh. and then a head of a sentinel goes flying down, and he walks out from behind it. He doesn't crawl out of it. He's nah. just like, oh, well. And that's him. the problem is, like, we're sacrificing cool-looking stuff for jokes. Like, that's because yeah. that's a joke. It's all of his. He's just all one-liners, and they're all so much worse than they ever were before. Yeah. See, this movie's just boring. Yeah. Eric, what was, your, what, was your, what was the point? Well, I guess you're, 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 it's not on your top 30. So No, I mean, it's <laughs> not. Um, I, don't, I don't really know. I remember seeing this in the theater, but I think by the time it got to the like the big fight scenes at the end i was just so yeah tired of it <laughs> and you know, I, I i really disliked that uh angel boy oh he's the oh, worst archangel oh, right we'll, we'll i get, remember we'll everyone was like oh he's gonna be a big thing in the movies <laughs> <laughs> like they're gonna do a fourth and it's gonna be him doing something right <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, that the, never happened the promise is it's always he's the character that's really doing nothing in this one's the next one's gonna be all about him uh, for me, it's when Xavier dies, and it's like, well, what the fuck? Well, are that's we even- yeah. Like Cyclops yeah. dies, I'm like, well, that sucks. And then like, 
five minutes later, Xavier is dead, and I'm like, well, what movie am I watching? I didn't blink when Cyclops died, because Cyclops is a character I've never cared for. And I also just but really the, dislike James Marsden. He's the straight man. I love That, I love that riled me up, because, you know, what, what are we doing? It's like we're watching Seinfeld without Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, just, I'm just imagining uh, uh, Jerry Seinfeld in Oakley glasses. <laughs> well, this this movie because it just shows that. So, like X Men, the first one's the first uh, super superhero movie in a long time. So yep. you're very forgiving of it. It's good, yeah, but it's not done on a budget. The second one, you're like, here we go, we're in a new superhero age, and then we realize everything dies, right? In, in <laughs> yep. X Men Three, and during that time, Oakley sunglasses goes from being very cool to like, okay, he can still wear those, <laughs> to this movie where you're like, come on, move on. Yeah. Cyclops, get some Ray-Bans. The yeah. movie literally shows a pair of Ray-Bans disintegrate. <laughs> I know those are still the Oakleys. Yeah, the Oakleys. Or the, oh, I meant Oakleys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, the, this movie starts with, I guess, Xavier and Magneto just come back from vacation in the 70s. They're incredibly tan at the beginning of this movie. <laughs> well, that's the easiest way to sort of smooth over like two old ass wrinkly white dudes if you need them to look 40 years younger and what do they do when they're coming back from vacation they're looking to pick up a kid <laughs> Dude, like that's that was my thing though like at the start of this like man we're watching another kid recruitment scene yeah. all of these movies have those it's like rogue and uh, bobby drake in the first one yeah. it's like you want to come live with us for a little while it's like man and i get it it's and they're always like we need the pretty boys and girls. You never <laughs> see like an ugly X Men at this academy. <laughs> yeah, you could be like even like the blue people are pretty gorgeous. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like where is Blob or someone like that? Or Toad? Toad? Has, they're all a part of the Brotherhood of Evil. Mutants. Right? You know, because because Charles wouldn't wouldn't talk to them. No, oh, only only sexy mutants can come to my school. These sexy little kids. And when when they arrive, this might even be the moment I realize it's a bad movie. Because when they arrive, they get out of the car on a suburban block. You see Magneto, and he goes, "I still don't know why I'm here." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and winks at the audience, and you're like, "Oh fuck, this movie's just gonna be a self referential piece of dog shit." But it's also like, yeah, like, what are you doing there, Magneto? Like, aren't you, I mean, it's, are you guys friends? Are you both, I guess, like, the idea is that like, they both started the school together in this timeline yeah. or it's whatever. A, it's a very tumultuous relationship yeah, yeah, with them. They're on well, again, they off again. They? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Xavier is dancing to Charleston. He's not paralyzed yet. And that's, a man, I hate that shot in this movie where it's, like, the bottom of the car door and it's, like, two feet get out and stand up. And I'm like, well... Don't I know who this is? Because we always got, got a highlight when Patrick Stewart's standing on two legs. <laughs> Xavier says something really shitty to Magneto here, and apparently they're still friends, so they're, they're, nobody's evil yet. And like, uh, there's like this bullshit conversation about like, well, this is the most powerful mutant we're about to see, and she's absolutely powerful. And like, uh, uh, Magneto's really excited about it. It's like, oh, with that power, she'll be fantastic. It's like. Well, Eric, you of all people should know absolute power leads to some pretty bad things. Like the Holocaust you were in. Like, remember that, that, that time you grew up in a concentration camp? To say that to a Holocaust survivor. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm going to try that one. <laughs> Eric, what's uh <laughs> You have the time, Magneto? Oh, what's that on your arm? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of that. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, I, thanks, Charles. It's thanks. not 12 o'clock yet. <laughs> well, Magneto, a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's your Holocaust tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> There's also the thing, one thing that I loathe in this movie is like the, like, what I'll call it like the color blocking. Mm. Like he, so Magneto can wear not his uniform yeah. or his his costume, but he has to always wear magenta. <laughs> you know, like, he's always in maroon. They got him in to the toe. deep maroon in this movie. He's yeah. got, he knows his style. He picks his color. It works yeah. for him. But he's dressed like a Dick Tracy villain in this first scene. He's got, like, a top hat and a thing. An oversized India, Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> um, so we cut to... And it, it's weird because then we cut to... Uh, Warren Worthington and like it's it's a wait it's, hang on sorry I don't want to miss it because there's no reason to talk about it at any other point in the episode oh, 
Stan Lee using a garden hose, and it looks like a, my big dick in this movie. Isn't <laughs> really? that great? He is erect for young Jean Grey. It's re- like <laughs> Jean Grey does the thing where she's like, "Oh yeah, you think you've seen powerful mutants?" And she lifts up all the cars in the right. cul-de-sac, and then and it fucks up all of their suspensions. When yeah, she drops when she just them. drops it. Thanks a lot, little kid. <laughs> but he's just like, "Here's my hose. Oh, look at it grow." And I'm, I'm like, watering God Jack damn. Kirby's grave. Who's not getting any credit for this movie? <laughs> Yeah, here's a, here's a drink to help you push up some daisies, dead Jack Kirby. <laughs> He's finally getting credit for the the like it's now Stanley and Jack Kirby in all these movies, oh, but like that yeah. was back then Stan wasn't given the credit. Drink up, you dead prick. <laughs> <laughs> so they're always trying to think of ways to use Stanley. At this point, they I mean, you're aware that you're making like a phallic joke there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a 90-year-old man with a six-foot penis. <laughs> <laughs> they also were really excited about um, like discovering how to use water and CGI in this movie. Because oh, yeah. everywhere you look, water is floating on ceilings. Oh, big time. Levitating in the... It's awful. Mm-hmm. So, sorry, Warren Worthington, it's our like a, bad a, scientist politician in, in this one. Uh, the there's like a weird like jerk-off scene where he's like in the bathroom like cutting his wings off. It's like your classic X-Men metaphor that kind of means everything and nothing at the same time oh exactly it's like you know uh homosexuality gender identity mm. you know aids is involved like it's just all the race is part of it racism point, oh like big time yes there's definitely a bombing abortion clinic metaphors in this movie i mean that's that's the great thing about the x-men like you can just throw all sorts of stuff into this little mutant catch-all and he comes in and his i mean like his kid's got wings on it uh, michael murphy like sees his kid with wings like bloody wings and he's like ah. Oh. Is he, he has he a says, line where he goes, yeah. not you, you know. <laughs> it's like he just walked in and he's jerking off to like a tiger. You always think something. that it's, you know, your friend's kid's the mutant. Not You didn't think your own kid would be a mutant. <laughs> well, I would be like, oh, thank God you don't have horns. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are good mutants. We can have. hide this. Yeah. There's we good. don't have to tell the neighbors about <laughs> this one. Good mutants to have, bad mutants to have. Good mutants to be, bad mutants to be. Well, it's the weird thing where, like, you show... Because, like, yeah, you can cover up this a little bit. But he's got, like... When you see him as an adult, the wings are, like, tucked into a, like, leather strap thing. Like, he's fucking James Conn of the Godfather with, like, the gun strap around him. Like, Sonny Corleone's walking around with his piece. Like, these wings just strapped to his back. How does he sit down, by the way? Like, what's that situation? Very carefully. Stools only, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Sit down, Warren. You're making me nervous. No, I'm cool. Do you have any uh, backlist for it? <laughs> <laughs> so, now, I'm not that accustomed to the X-Men comic books or the lore or anything like that. I want to say that up front before sure. someone comments on me. That you should you make it. me <laughs> sick! <laughs> but, now, in these... Because in this movie, there's so many people that are mutants. Uh-huh. Now, in the comic books and everything else, like, is it like half the goddamn population? It depends. This it's, is a lot. Yeah, it's of like people, an ever right? increasing population. The idea is like, oh, it's uh, oh, it's it, spreading, huh? Right. It's like uh, 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 as a multiracial person, it's like, oh, everybody's mixed now. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Or like Latinos making up the like majority in in the U.S. It's supposed yeah. to have this like threatening to the majority feel. Yes. Right. Right. Dear okay. Michael Murphy's of the world. Well, I mean, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> not you too. <laughs> and obviously, we get into the whole Holocaust thing. It's yeah. happening again. Yeah, they yeah. love it. Yeah. Uh, they, they do love it. And I mean, I guess the movie starts with like the, the danger room sequence, which Sean talked about, which is kind of like whatever. It's like fan service. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But what I enjoy about that, though, is it's just kind of it's what I liked seeing in the they do it in the comics. They did it in the cartoon. It's like the casual X-Men adventure yeah. where it's like we're just doing stuff and everybody gets to showcase their powers a little bit. We're kind of making jokes and it's like casually fighting a dangerous presence, which yeah. is okay with me. I kind of feel like Magneto shouldn't be in this movie at all. Like this is kind of the problem with these mo- They always find like Magneto is like part of the team and he has to have something to do in every movie. Like, but just have a new villain and have a new threat. Like that's, that's what I'm kind of nervous about apocalypse. Cause it keeps showing Magneto like hanging out and I'm like, well, He's not the bad guy, right? Like, so he well, brings in the money. Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, he's got, he got the, yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's Ian McKellen and Fassbender. Like, they're the best actors of these series. <laughs> so you just kind of find stuff for them to do. And it's like you know, Michael Fassbender in this new movie can just look like Michael Fassbender. Oscar Isaac, while largely famous at this point, yeah. looks like a big you know purple whatever with all that makeup on his <laughs> apocalypse. You know, 
He's he like a, the most, the world's most dangerous penis head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But, <laughs> Penetrating theaters. <laughs> <laughs> But I, uh, th- yeah, that has just come out on Friday, actually, last Friday. Yeah. Because I'll have seen this movie by the time. Uh, yeah, that's, see, this is weird because, like, while we're recording this, it's like way in advance. I'm seeing this movie in a few days mm. and I'm very nervous about it. it we can talk about Apocalypse at, at the end, but, but yeah. So, I mean, I do feel like this movie's better if it's just a Phoenix movie or if it's just a Cure movie. But, like, Magneto, like, just kind of having an agenda in the middle of it's kind of like whatever. Right. And they're also going to purport him to be the main villain in yeah. this movie, which is also like, uh, just, just give it a rest. Um, so the uh, the movie, the opening, just before we get to the Danger Room sequence, the opening credit sequence oh, yeah. is like the Fight Club synapse thing that happened in every fucking movie for five years. And yes. it looks like shit, too. It looks, it, looks, it looks really bad, and they they ditched any kind of Patrick Stewart narration for this one. Right. Which I know because they recorded it, and I because I watched it on Blu-ray, and I've got all these deleted scenes oh, to tell really? you guys about, <laughs> including that. They just put that there, and I was like, why would you not have it? It's is, is like it him just doing the from the time of memorial. It's but, another thing about sometimes life finds a way or whatever, <laughs> it, whatever you know. It's just it's it's essentially the same speech over and over again. But this one's about like you know, and sometimes people try to eradicate what they don't understand. You know, whatever yeah. it is. I'm just thinking about <laughs> good luck, graduates. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Xavier must be on on that that like com- uh, commencement speech list, right? Like, oh, oh yeah, sure. Oh, they got that guy that could read minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> he just like, has do- the same speech yeah. during a doing a tour. Do we of want America? him or Chuck Schumer? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I got about- bumped from Letterman last night for, by <laughs> Chuck Schumer. <laughs> Because Xavier, would be the, Xavier would be the third guest on Letterman circa like 2000 whatever like yeah. at, instead of a stand up comedian there's the author always oh yes yeah I wrote a new book about mutants and I can read your mind Dave <laughs> I got bumped be- by a dog that can use a microwave <laughs> <laughs> Xavier would be huge on Colbert now. Like, oh yeah, Colbert's oh. all about like, oh look, you don't realize this person is a hero and a celebrity, but I'm going to redefine them. Mm. It would be yep. Charles Xavier Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever they recruit, Meg, uh, they recruit Jean Grey in the '70s. We have this cure now in present day, and it's also we're told, and this is useless. Like th- this movie takes place in the near future. You get that little tag there at yeah, the start of the right. danger room sequence. I didn't even. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" But yeah, what does it matter? I think that no. I think even is the that, first, the first one, the first X Men is like in the near future. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they, they, this they is, it's always on there? it's always a little bit. So I guess like it starts in 2010, and now <laughs> maybe this movie took place in like 2015. Oh, oh weird! Yeah, what something. I love about speaking of that, uh, the shitty uh, Charles Xavier list credit sequence. How we start that is like right after you know. Warren Worthington the third's like been trying to cut these wings out of his back, and it's like let's zoom in on this kid's back wound to start this credit <laughs> sequence because they just back knee. They do this hard <laughs> zoom right into the hole in this kid's shoulder blade, and I'm like, fucking gross. It's the most interesting scene about that character. <laughs> Warren Worthington does two things in this movie. He comes in uh, and like it's like, oh, the cure is happening. So like he's about to get cured, and he's like, Dad, this feels weird. And then like he majestically spreads his wings and leaves the movie for a really long time. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end, he kind of just swoops in and saves his dad. Yeah. That nobody but cared this, about anyway. This is a big problem with this. Well, not the big problem with this movie, but there's so many characters who have such a minimal story arc yeah. where it's like in this scene, here's your problem in this scene. Here's your resolution. Yeah. Otherwise we're not going to see you. You yeah. have one minute of screen time. Yeah. It's a whole arc. So you have that for rogue. You have that for, for Archangel. You have that for every, every, every like periphery character, not Wolverine Cyclops. Yeah, exactly. There's like, it's insane. Uh, Pyro falls into that. Poor Aaron Stanton, man. That guy just Wait, never is... caught fire, pun intended. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, this is the Fireman. Yeah, yeah. Fireman. His name is Pyro. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning something. All right. And then in Sub Zero, he goes like this. <laughs> Well, I, I like at the end of the movie, they're like, fire and ice, finally going at it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Nobody yeah. really, nobody was, no X-Men fan was like, finally, X, Iceman and Pyro are going to do it. And it's so stupid, too, because Wolverine's like, 
uh, hey, Bobby, why don't you go fight your old friend? Because remember when you used to be friends a couple movies ago, but then your friend who used to be your friend then joined up with Magneto? Uh. Yeah, 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 go fight that guy. <laughs> Also, Wolverine wouldn't know that. Wolverine would be like, oh, fight that blonde guy. Like, I don't know. That You've guy known was... him for years. Whatever. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you took a road trip with him. Yeah, I don't remember that well. <laughs> and they're giving him a bad wig in this movie for no reason. Just dye yeah. that kid's hair. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are we doing? It looks this, like shit. Speaking of Wolverine and bad hair, this is the worst Wolverine hair I've seen in a long time. Like, yeah. it's... Yes. It's like, is it extra humid in this movie? Like, it's very, like... You're totally bloody. right. It's, like, floppier. Like, it looks it also, like a black tomato on his head. has a... <laughs> Black it also tomato. has a, uh, a a spit curl, which yeah. he doesn't have another. And a spit curl says, "This guy's badass, but not really." Look at that spit curl. <laughs> like you can take him home to mom. There's a, this. It's weird to see him not like in Days of Future Past. He's such a monster. Like his physique is so enormous. Oh, he's he looks, juicing up a storm for that movie. Mm, and he's That's... like moving his nipples in that one scene. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Like moving them to another part of his chest? <laughs> he does. Like in that in that like bedroom scene, he's like, Hi, I'm Wolverine. His nipples like go up his forearms. Like, <laughs> like, that's not how muscles should work. Wait, is wait, now I don't know the comic books that well. Is that one of his powers? <laughs> yes. His nipples can go wherever they want. <laughs> Regeneration and nipple movage. Yep. He so Go he, my minions. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I would love to see him like go down his legs and like go onto the floor and like <laughs> oh. chase someone. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a a sex scene between like uh, Bobby Dr Iceman and and uh, Kitty Pride, yeah. and he like takes off his shirt. And he has three nipples, and she's like, "Oh, I didn't know you had a superfluous nipple." And they're like, "Wolverine's in the room." <laughs> <laughs> Quit spying on us, you pervert! Oh, he's just like feeling everything with his nipple. <laughs> There's a weird class photo in a room, and they're like, "Oh, who's that guy? That's Wolverine's nipple." And it kind slides across. <laughs> I could see this becoming like the Adams family's thing. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. The nipple just running around sure. the school. They try oh, to order <laughs> order pepperoni pizza and they're like, not pepperoni again. <laughs> you can't do it. Logan's gonna fuck with it. Wolverine Jr. is here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, uh, before I bring the, bring the meeting to order, I just want you to know that Wolverine's nipple is in the room as a surrogate. Wolverine's on business. It has a clicking sound. <laughs> Taking notes for Wolverine will be his right nipple. <laughs> That's disgusting. That is very disgusting. <laughs> well, it's those things out. Do you remember those like half bouncy ball things that you'd like tuck inside out and then they pop? Yeah. <laughs> oh that, yeah. That's the sound that that nipple makes. Oh, of course. <laughs> and it can do that too. It could bounce around. <laughs> it's got like a good, good uh, jump. So Cyclops is very upset about the death of Jean Grey. We don't know how much time has passed between the two movies, right? They don't know. Really, it's still, it's the near future, but it's maybe even the farther future at this point. It's been enough that people are like kind of frustrated that he's still upset about yeah, it. Like totally. Wolverine's like, we got to get on with our fucking lives here, Scott. <laughs> And he, like, I guess is getting messages from Jean Grey, so he gets on a motorcycle. Everyone has motorcycle jackets in this movie. Not just, <laughs> like, yep. every uh, top... Did, I, I'm surprised Xavier didn't put one on at some point. Well, he can't go fast enough to be on a... <laughs> to need a leather jacket. <laughs> but even, like, multiple men's just hanging out in a, in a totally. leather jacket. Yeah, in a, that's Beast, true. Beast puts one on and makes a joke about, like, I can't believe this fit me once. Oh, man. Yep. Yep, that's a joke. <laughs> and I'm just laughing my superfluous third nipple off in this movie. So I'm like, oh, you know, Cyclops kind of got uh, uh, relegated to B-Squad in that second movie because like, he, he turns into a bad guy in the middle. Like They mind control him, and then like, there's oh, that stupid right. fight that happens. And I'm like... In the, but, wait, wait. In the movie on your top 30 of all time? In the movie on my top 30 of all time. fight scene? Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, that's why it's low on the list. So. <laughs> but uh, in this one, I'm like, oh, man, it's a Dark Phoenix saga. Of course, Cyclops is going to get premium screen time and like <laughs> he gets murdered in five minutes off-screen murder by the way yeah it's just that and this is an effect they use that covers multiple things i guess because it's the same look when rogues like sucking powers out of a person that like you get these blue veins that don't really exist you're yeah. just getting like drained like that happens to him because they're making out they're making Ooh. out hardcore oh, on this yeah, rock. Man. I'm yeah. looking at some tongue here. And Jean like Grey's eyes are wide open. Oh, oh yeah. Do you have something in your mouth? What? Wolverine's nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yuck. Oh, yuck. <laughs> You're messing with my girl, Scotty. I'm going to send my nipple after you. <laughs> 
does the does do you think the nipple at like the top of this nipple has like a little Wolverine claw come out of it? <laughs> Three? I was, no, no, just one. <laughs> no, it's got like two stray hairs that kind of vaguely remember <laughs> resemble Wolverine's haircut. Yes, <laughs> that's how you could tell that it's. Wolverine's nipple and not somebody else's. Yeah, nipple. exactly. It's one of the other various nipple mutants. Um, <laughs> Is that a nipple smoking a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, whatever. <laughs> he gets disintegrated, and then, like, uh, Xavier's like, go to Alkali Lake. Something's going wrong there. And they. He doesn't say. Uh, Cyclops just died. <laughs> yeah. He's, he gives him like a, yeah, yeah. Well, like, he's like, I'll leave that for you to Disturbance discover. in the force type he's of thing. He's kind of yeah. like pissed off at Cyclops that he's not getting it together. He kind of gives like Storm a promotion. It's like, well, Scott's just a joke at this point. It's he like really, this, he's talking shit to a <laughs> lot of these people in this movie. <laughs> like throw in some serious shade. And that's one of them. He's like, well, Scott just clearly hasn't gotten over the death of his stupid girlfriend. <laughs> and if, if if this movie really wanted to deal with the challenges that minorities and people face, yeah. you would have had Storm say, so the only way I'd become principal <laughs> yeah. is if the white heterosexual man's wife got murdered. Well, thanks, Professor X. Well, it's a very specific third place. It's like, well, Gene's dead and Scott's a mess. Congratulations, Storm. <laughs> Listen, Aurora. <laughs> Take it or leave it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Running a fucking business here. <laughs> Let's think about that first day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you dress too provocative. You dress too <laughs> mutant-like for the business. We are running a business here, Storm. Principal Aurora Monroe. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, sounds great. How's Carol? <laughs> Can't fit Aurora Monroe on a desk placard. <laughs> I'm hoping, uh, yeah, Storm's kind of terrible in these movies. Well, right? she wasn't supposed to be in it. That was yeah. the whole thing. It's like Brian Singer was pissed off at him, uh, and it was pissed off at Storm or at Halle Berry for <laughs> X2. Yeah. And then he, like, said to all the nerds, like, yeah. don't worry, we're firing her. And then he left for Superman, and Brett Ratter's like, hey, everybody, I'm bringing Halle Berry back. And we're like, well, fuck. Well, what was the beef? Like, what? I mean, what does she do in X2? She had a really high, She wanted a lot of money because yeah. it was just post-Academy Awards. And she was oh, right. particularly bad in the first one because she yes. had that famous line of what happens <laughs> when lightning strikes toes. But that's not her fucking Same fault. Thing. Yeah, maybe the delivery could have... No. <laughs> but she, was, she was never good as Storm. No, and I mean, like, Storm's an amazing character. Right. And I'm hoping she's in the new movie, so I'm hoping it's a different take on it. So then we cut to the Department of Mutant Affairs in this movie, <laughs> which is just Homeland Security. Yeah. Uh, and this is Beast. Uh, Kelsey Grammer is like uh, the, the mutant representative he's, in there. Yeah, tasting some wine. I, I, love the, <laughs> I love the first scene where we're, we're introduced to Beast, who's purportedly a genius. And to show you he's a genius, he's reading Scientific American. <laughs> Like an eighty year old, like my people's grandfather just reads like, <laughs> like yeah. Scientific American. It's is that a, right? Yeah, really. Yeah. He also is late. The only person who's late for the important meeting with the president, <laughs> which is like a really shitty way of portraying the one mutant that gets to be part of the cabinet. Yeah. It's like, well, he's operating on mutant time. <laughs> it's just like insane. Like, don't just yeah. let him be the first one there. Have yeah. him hanging upside down in the. <laughs> Oh, fucking yeah. Dating, you know, hanging, up, hanging on the ceiling room. like they don't realize he's yeah. there. Well, uh, we're waiting for Beast. I thought, you know, that makes sense with the mutant. And then he's like, I've been here the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, that would have been much better. So, I heard that, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> so he's terrible in this movie, right? Oh, he's so terrible. And like, it sucks because he's perfect for this role. He sounds like, you know, Hank McCoy should sound the look is like whatever. The look is terrible. When they, when they open up his shirt and he's got like just a sweater on, you know, like he's <laughs> clearly just wearing like a sweater like from a Hot se- Topic seventies shag rugs. <laughs> yeah, and like I don't know, he just looks shitty. Like the muscle suit they put him in is oh, really man. dumb. He he um, it, it, this is. I, I didn't realize how much we'd be comic nerds in yeah. this, but but he it, like it's the wizard comics 
projection thing. So back in the day, there's Wizard Comics is like, here's how much your this comic is worth right. this month. Yeah. And then every now and then they'd have a little article that said, if it was possible to make a blank movie, yes. here's who we'd cast. Right. Kelsey Grammer is exactly who you'd cast in that article. But if you when push comes to shove, he's too old. It doesn't make sense. It's not going to actually work. Yeah, it's a good idea. If you can CGI that whole character, have him do the voice, <laughs> yeah. maybe that works. Yeah, he's right. 60 years old at this point <laughs> and like clearly just kind of sitting down a lot of this movie. But that's why, and I mean, I get it, and it would be nicer to have like a more nimble Hank McCoy, I suppose, but like that's why in this movie, he's like first gen X-Men. Yeah, that's and true. It's like he's because he's got the gags about, like, here's my old uniform. Thank God it fits my fat fucking beast gut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, back in my day, you know, so he's like that when Xavier started yeah. the school. Like, why isn't Hank McCoy going with Charles Xavier to Jean Grey's house? Not mm-hmm. fucking Magneto. Well, we don't want to scare her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> there, well, he goes back to, he has a scene with the, the mutant affair people, the... the Discuss the cure. Uh, Beast comes back, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's Beast! Hey, Beast! Hi, Beast!" Oh yeah, that's yeah. He's just walking down the hallowed halls of his like alma mater, kind mm-hmm. of a thing. Oh, Beast is back! I hate this. They act like he's been there the whole time. Yep. Those first movies, there's not a sniff of Beast. Not even a reference that. to him. It's one thing if like in the back, or if they. Mention, oh wait, was like... he on a computer screen? Was his name <laughs> on a computer screen? <laughs> he actually was. Really? Oh my god! <laughs> Twin. Did you write down everything on the computers? <laughs> no, no. You're like the, hacking the X Men. <laughs> in the second movie, there's two. There's a scene with a bunch of like names on a computer screen. Uh, that that's where Gambit's name is. But Beast is Hank McCoy. Is there's an interview with a guy named Hank McCoy right. who's like giving a speech on mutants, and it's just some white dude. And it's like, oh wait, what? what? Yeah, it's just like the reality of this movie is like whatever, dude. dude they... and this is your favorite movie. Too. <laughs> no. that... <laughs> <laughs> the third, yeah. <laughs> well, wait, did um, because you get it a little bit in this movie because like they have this mutant leech whose whole thing is like, yeah, his mutant power is he destroys like your mutation and turns you back to normal. So like when Hank McCoy meets him, you know, you see Kelsey Grammer's hand like turn back, but like. Is there ever an arc in the comics where, like, Beast can just transform back and forth like that? No, but yeah. that's, like, his big thing in life is he's like, I am a monster. Like, you, yeah. there's multiple times they hit on the fact that Beast wished he did, didn't have to look this way. Right. right. And originally the character looks like a, just like a Danny DeVito, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's got, like, Danny DeVito with really big hands. Yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, well, everybody likes Wolverine's haircut, so let's make a blue Wolverine. <laughs> and that's how this version came Yeah. Because like, am I mistaken, though? Because in those, these, like, this newer trilogy, yeah. he does go back and forth. Yeah, it's that's kind of a stupid thing when they're not committing to it because they got, like, a really good-looking dude. And they're Nicholas like, Holt. They're like, yeah, but he's really good looking so we'll make a serum wherein he's not oh that it's way a serum the... that does yeah, it and yeah, then yeah. he like he can like hulk out of it or whatever yeah, which is kind of silly but there's the... like moments in those movies where like wolverine's punching him in the face like come on do it turn back you know the weird thing about like when he grabs when he shakes leech's hand and his, his hand goes white it's kind of weird like shouldn't that forever make his hand white like how is is his skin oh i think they have constantly like... being made blue by something or is it oh, like just blue but is it like is it they weaponize that kid's power right? Yes. right? And but without it, it's just like you could just hang out with him for a minute, right? And it's get like, back no, no, your normal? yeah, it's like a proximity it's, thing, right? Yeah. But the idea being that like they're shooting like pieces of this kid at people, yeah. But I think when you're just around him, you get like a moment, right? Which you know? poor Kelsey Grammer, man, just like have him walk all the way Face forward. first. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't get a lick of grammar in this movie. It's yeah. like, you'll get a hand, but otherwise you gotta look like this blue piece of poop. <laughs> or if the kid's, like, playing a video game, he, like, leans over in his face, like, oh, look! But then it would be Kelsey Grammer in, hilar- in a hilarious wig. <laughs> which would be kind of fun. In a Beethoven wig. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of does look like a big, fat, blue Beethoven in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> He the, the costume design's awful because like they can't figure out how to do the fur right yeah. and like Beast is supposed to be just covered in fur yeah and then he has longer hair but like the fact that it's all just Blue Man Group makeup all over his face that looks weird. shitty he just looks it's like this they just borrowed some Rebecca Romaine Stamos yeah. makeup and put it on <laughs> Kelsey Grammer so she uh, by the way um, is is arrested in the beginning of the movie right I, I, uh, and basically she's on a convoy and Magneto. Uh, and his group like stop the convoy, and 
they break out uh, Juggernaut, played by Vinnie Jones. Uh, All right, let's just take this one at a time. <laughs> I hate Vinnie Jones. I have forever. He's terrible. Mm-hmm. This is terrible. Everything about this is terrible. My God, this is terrible. This might be one of the worst parts of this, of all the X-Men movies. Yep. My God. He looks really stupid, too. The helmet they like, <sighs> I know that Juggernaut's got a dumb helmet anyway, but you've <laughs> got to find a, either a better way or just no helmet. But how well, do you make a dumb thing look dumber? And they do it. They <laughs> somehow do it in this movie. Can't, can't his uniform have been created in this century? Like, why is it like a caveman version of Juggernaut? Just like Juggernaut, yeah, he looks kind of dumb, but at least it looks like he's wearing something that was built Contemporary. Recently. Something yeah. you can get at Urban Outfitters, at least. <laughs> that helmet's so preposterous. <laughs> it, it looks like Man at Arms from uh, uh, He-Man. Yes. No, oh, totally yeah, right. yeah. It does. Man, <laughs> if they gave Juggernaut a big old mustache like that, <laughs> I would totally. like that. And, <laughs> and he's just, he's so fucking stupid. And like, they're using him for jokes, he's and it's like, like Oh, I gotta pee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I gotta take a little tinko. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. I'm fucking making you laugh through this whole movie. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. That's disgusting. <laughs> that The fact that they worked in an E-bombs world <laughs> meme into this movie. And yeah. that, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. And you, we were talking about this yesterday, Steve, because you said it was... You went back and watched that video. You inspired me to do it. It's fucking funny. It's just a it's, couple of high dudes watching X-Men making jokes over it. Which is awesome. And then this, it's like, it's used as a joke. Yeah. And it just, it's, I remember cringing in the theater. Yeah, and I yeah. thought I was fucking crazy because the theater went wild <laughs> laughing about this. This, I think that is the exact moment. So Chris, Chris Cabin's story. Oh, please. That, so Chris Cabin and I go see this movie, um, you know, opening day. And it's packed. We get there a little late because I'm usually late. <laughs> and, and Chris is like, purchase the tickets for us. We're sitting in the front row. It's fucking awful. But we're like, but the movie will be good. We're wrong. <laughs> and around that time, I reach into my wallet, pull out $10 and hand it to Chris mid movie and say, Take this now, because I am not giving you any money for a smoothie later. <laughs> like, I can't, I won't be able to bring myself to pay for this. It's so fucking bad. Like, just take the money. I, uh, that, now, let's settle up before this gets any worse. <laughs> now, also, so I this love is, that idea. This is uh, one of the things I can interject with the plethora of deleted scenes I watched last oh, night. Oh, please. Is Chris <laughs> Cabin in this? You mute? <laughs> is, he one of the, is he one of the prisoners in this bus? <laughs> Him, uh, Steve Buscemi as Garland Green. <gasps> yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Bing Rames is on, on this bus? <laughs> oh, that would be awesome if it just turned into the cast of Con Air. <laughs> I would love it. Um, no, so there's the scene at the end of the movie where he's chasing Kitty Pride through this facility. Yeah, yeah. Kitty Pride's trying to save the boy, Leech, there. And he's, like, busting through all these walls with his dumb fucking Renaissance fair helmet. <laughs> and he, there's this thing that, ugh, thank God they cut this one out. Guys, he breaks through a wall and just goes, here's Juggy. No. Oh, no. You're lying. Oh. I'm not. You're, oh, you're lying. I'm not. I'm not lying. Juggy? I, you can't thought, call yourself Juggy ever. I thought there was one too many tall glasses of water when I had been watching this movie last night. And I was like, no, he fucking calls himself Juggy, <laughs> which is, I don't even know what, and we're making the shining jokes, you but know? If he said, here's Johnny, it'd be one thing, or here's the juggernaut, would be stupid. <laughs> also, or just, just, here's the juggernaut, bitch. Do a play yeah. on the E-bombs world <laughs> meme <laughs> that you so desperately need to cram into this movie. But yeah, here's Juggy. <laughs> Why did, he, Juggy. why did he say, here's me jugs? <laughs> here's some big jugs for ya. <laughs> Fucking Juggy. And by that, I mean my biceps. What do you <laughs> think I was talking about? Whatever, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he does. He's, I love that he just needs to take a piss this whole movie. And that's a guy that's just gonna urinate himself in that cell, so what are we even doing? <laughs> and then we have Eric Dane as Multiple Man, who has literally two... It's, it's amazing, because they spend a lot of time talking about Multiple Man. Like, when they're recruiting him, they're like, oh, this guy robbed seven banks at once. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> So, Man, does that suck. So he comes out. They, they break him out, and they're, they're like, Hello, 
I'm Magneto. I want to. I want you to join my brotherhood. And he's like, sure, I'm in. Done. That's he, it. Not even like a quip, not anything. Like, no. And you know what's weird? You know what he's kind of doing in this movie, and I don't know why? I guess it's because he sort of looks like him. He's kind of doing a Ray Liotta impression in this movie. Yeah, a little bit. At that part, like, all I heard was like, all my life, I wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> sure, I'll help your mutant brotherhood. Oh, my God. A, a good fellas version of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants? <laughs> All told through oh. the perspective of multiple fans? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And you got, you got Joe Pesci as Toad. That would work. That, that's great, some great. logical casting. Right there. <laughs> I guess... Um, what Anybody you else in this tanker? Oh, no, I guess Magneto would be uh, Pauly Sor- uh, uh, Paul Sorvino, probably. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't be Blob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Paul Servino <laughs> might play Blob. Yeah. <laughs> you made a fucking jerk out of me. <laughs> Use uh, this razor blade to slice your garlic thinly, multiple now. <laughs> thinly. Put a little wine in there. I like the idea of like a, a little razor blade like being moved by Magneto magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helpful in the kitchen. I like the idea that, like, in all those mob tales, it's always like, you fucked my wife. So, like, multiple mans learning how to make pasta with <laughs> with Magneto, but also having sex with Magneto's oh, wife. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something tells me you fucked my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This X-Men Goodfellas cast is coming together nicely. <laughs> um, uh, this is when Mystique gets shot in the back with the cure. And then uh, you get a nice finally naked shot of Rebecca Romaine, I guess. Oh, right. That's yeah. for the fans. That's, That's because she has been naked for three movies already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is, and again, uh, these deleted scenes keep coming. Oh, so, like, there's an, in- <laughs> there's an incident. Well, because th- the other thing Just that this. Out, say, oh, look at those juggies. <laughs> <laughs> Because the other thing that this movie, you learn what? by all There's these... three nipples. <laughs> Wolverine, get out of here. <laughs> so repulsive. What you learn by watching these deleted scenes is they're not all deleted scenes. They're also just like alternate takes of things. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. So there's a part in this where like Mystique is in this cage and she's pretending to be the president. Yeah. And the security guard is just like whatever he says, like, yeah. I'm not buying it, Mr. President, or whatever the line is. He's a little harsh, that security guard. Yeah. Do you remember what he says in the movie, though? It's something along the lines of, like, I've heard enough, bitch. Yeah, there's something like like that, right? When she's a little girl, which I think is a way to set up that Juggernaut gets to say bitch and it doesn't feel out of nowhere because we're saying bitch now. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're just saying bitch in this movie. Well, because, like, he's got some some line, right? And and then she says as the little girl, like, I'm going to watch. When I get out of here, I'm going to kill you or whatever it is, right? But in this alternate take, he's the like he's she's as the president. Yeah. And, you know, it's that old guy who's been in a bunch of stuff. And he's like, the, the let's stunt me. double to Jonathan Price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. You can't get Jonathan. Well, I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, get me out of here. I'm the president of the United States or whatever it is. And this in this alternate take, this security guard walks up to him and goes, you know what? Fuck you, Mr. President. <laughs> this is what this, is there like, an R-rated cut of this movie with I, the juggies and the fuck you? I, it's so bizarre because also a lot of deleted things we'll get to later are like violence related things. Oh, really? so I think like yeah. this yeah. movie may have hit like an R and they're like... MC-17. <laughs> <laughs> little with that nipple running around. <laughs> the weird thing about Mystique turning into a little girl, like, and I never understand like the, the morphing power kind of doesn't... It's one of the less making sense of all of the powers. I kind of feel because well, there's what? like there's shape shifting. None of none of it makes sense. Well, no, I, <laughs> but it's like the difference between like turning yourself from one adult into another yeah. versus like shrinking yourself down into right. like a little Where, child. Where's what, that what matter turn, going? I yeah, guess, turn into a mouse at that point and get out of your handcuff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good point. Can she turn into animals and shit, Why or like not? a fork? <laughs> <laughs> or how about a nipple? Yeah, just turn into a little nipple and like, <laughs> hop out of that jail cell. Pop out of that jail cell. <laughs> Why not? 
So Magneto, who, in my opinion, never had too much interest in Mystique anyway. (laughs) Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Just kind of says, like, you know, she turns human. He's like, oh, you're disgusting now. Goodbye. I'm sorry, my dear. You're not one of us anymore. And here's something. Ian McKellen's great in all these movies. Oh, spoiler. Even in this one, like, the next scene is, it's kind of amazing. So the cure comes out. There's this big mute meeting uh, of, like, kind of, Va- like I guess uh, moderate mutants like some are evil some are <laughs> sure at an old abandoned church <laughs> yes and this guy's giving a speech and Ma- uh, Ian McKellen gets up and gives this great kind of really good speech about right. like again invoking the holocaust like you never know when they're coming for you kind of a thing right but if if we're in this world in a room full of mutants and Magneto's just there, you know Magneto. Oh, fuck, that's Magneto. Yeah, that's Magneto. It's like William Damn. Shatner being at a fucking Comic-Con. Like, everyone's stopping <laughs> and seeing him. Well, they, you know, oh, they're getting hounded for autographs again. <laughs> He's, like, sitting in the back. He's got a coat on and a yeah. hat. Like, they... Because, like, this is the beginning of... Uh, you know, they keep saying, like, he's in hiding. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, Do we have a line on Magneto? And, you know, Hank McCoy's like, we're working on it, <laughs> damn it! It's got to be easy to have a line on him because the thing that frustrates me so much about this movie is that they walk everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All of yes. the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants never get into a vehicle. They yeah. just walk, and at, at certain points, they're like, well... Do we swim now? I mean, like, they really are just Wait, walking may- from point A to point but B. But maybe they got, like, flash powers, right? Flash power? Oh, yeah, they can, can they all run, run fast? fast? Can they? Only one of them can. Yeah, that's oh, right. That's I'm right. not renting a party bus for all of my <laughs> brotherhood. We will go on foot. That sets up the stupidest part of the movie, which we'll get to at the end, because that doesn't make any sense. Because, yeah, you're right. They, there needs they to need be a, a footbridge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he kind of recruits some people and whatever. And now this is when... Jean Grey wakes up and first so she, she wakes up and she like hits on Wolverine and like there's this weird like almost sex scene which is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable and I'll tell you why because she's in like this, you know, medical bay yeah. in the mansion and whatnot. And like they are about to get down to fucking and like Wolverine's going to do it. And I'm like anyone could come in at yeah. any moment. So that's what gives you the thrill. Oh. Well, not yeah. to mention she's got Cyclops' ashes in her hair. And he's, <laughs> like, he's, he's kind of ready to go for it. Hey, hey Gene, I'll help you spread those ashes. <laughs> but, well, but she, like, he, he, like, gets hip to it, though, because she's, like, kind of, like, starting to, like, bite him and shit yeah. when they make out. And he's, like, Damn, Gene, you didn't do this the last time we almost had sex. <laughs> you weren't trying to bite me or nothing. <laughs> Wait, maybe it's not Gene. Oh, maybe. no, it's Zool. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> yeah, Gene sleep. Gene went bye-bye for a while. I'm just kind of <laughs> hanging out here with Zool. <laughs> Calls up Bray stands. <laughs> um, so Gene g- breaks out... Um, uh, Wolverine realizes enough to not have sex with this mentally deranged woman, like who's yeah, who's like gl- glowing eyes. She's got like crazy witch hair in this movie for some reason. Well, and this is so like the before like this almost fucking happens. There's an argument between um like Wolverine and Xavier, where Xavier says like, "Hey, so here's the deal," and this is what like I guess you were saying it doesn't pull from the comics, but this idea of like. She's so strong or whatever, and so he put in these, like, little safeguards in her brain to make her not, like, freak out with her powers because she's, like, the most powerful mutant ever, I guess. And, like, that caused her split personality. So, like, he explains all this to Wolverine. You know, Wolverine does the whole, like, well, Jean didn't have a choice. You, like, fucked with her or whatever. And this is another instance of Xavier being a dick to somebody for no reason in this movie. Because we couldn't have a woman headmaster, could we? (laughs) So I did a little something. Well, this is, no, because, like, he's like, well, Jean didn't have a say in this. And, And Patrick Stewart's like, you don't find yourself in a position to tell me to do fucking anything. <laughs> Especially you, you stupid grunt of mine. You <laughs> stupid Canadian grunt. Yeah, he's like, I'll leave you in whatever Canadian saloon I found you in. Exactly. You know I was like, mean? whoa, dude, you're supposed to be friends. <laughs> no, it's a very weird scene. He's just like, I, I like Xavier's just having like a catty afternoon or something. <laughs> I just was like, wow, that's, it's such a, it's so nasty for no reason. And even Wolverine's like, all right, Jesus, fuck you. I'll come back later. <laughs> so then he does come back later. They almost fuck. She breaks out. And, and she, she does a good telepathic your belt off. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, right. yep. We got to fuck because I'm going to throw that belt. Whoop. 
Right off. <laughs> Which I don't like. Why is she like? Why does the Phoenix care about setting him up like that? Like when she can just make him explode into a bunch of digital pieces. Yeah. Phoenix yeah. has her needs too. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's true. That, it is a person. That's the big problem of this movie is you have no idea what the Phoenix wants in this movie. There's whatsoever. no rules. Right. No she, rules. So she goes to her house uh, and it turns into like the poltergeist house. Like all like it's a, or it's a <laughs> evil <laughs> totally dead. Good. Like all the cabinets are opening and closing <laughs> for no reason. Xavier, <laughs> Xavier and Magneto confront her again. Uh, and Magneto's helmet is stupider in this movie than it is in most movies. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Well, why would they just use the same one? Why has it got to be a different fucking helmet? The first one might have looked stupider when it's on him, but he holds it the majority of the yeah. movie. And this one, he's oh. wearing it too much. Yeah. Because well, well, he's in hiding, right? Isn't that the thing that prevents Xavier from finding him? Yeah. So, right. so he's trying to, like, lay low and whatnot. But I mean, like, the, the, the helmet they do, like, the, it, they get closer to the comics in the newer movies. Like, it's a real, like, just straight up Magneto helmet. And that kind of looks better. Yeah. This, it's like, like kind it's, of it's half a little, in, half out. It's, it's much flashier in these new movies yeah. like that it is a costume <laughs> of the highest order so uh they they confront each other uh xavier gets turned into fucking jelly at this point and this is i mean it's so stupid and this was actually i mean the more i think about it i was disappointed by beast but like you're yeah. right this was when this happened in the movie i'm like what why like this this man this yeah. actor that i've loved my entire life is sorry like 80 percent of the reason i bought a ticket to this movie yeah and you just fucking iced him. If, if he dies in the last scene and it means something, sure. Mm -hmm. If he dies in the middle and then everyone's like, well, I guess we got to carry on. Well, if, and if he's major death number two of the past <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's true. like, it's undercutting. How do I really feel that? I don't feel that. People are dying now. Okay, it, just kill them all. You don't, they you, do. like, you don't have time to, like, let that have any kind of weight at all. Yeah. Like, because we have an hour and fucking 10 minutes left of this movie or whatever it is well xavier has a funeral and wolverine wears jeans to it which well, you that's know what, what wolverine, wolverine no you know it's what, what wolverine does, would do he doesn't even attend though he yeah. just sits on the veranda yeah looks down with his back. jeans on yeah. Dude, wolverine a, doesn't do funerals the, yeah that's a dick move especially like you're there but not there so everyone's still talking about you anyway wolverine we we get it wolverine maybe he was doing a canadian funeral <laughs> Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> you put on your jeans and you stand a little further away and observe. Well, I think he was pissed off because maybe he wanted to give the eulogy and instead Halle Berry just gives a really shitty eulogy. Like, <laughs> sure. thanks a lot, Storm. This is this was like our savior and it's like the lamest pseudo motivational whatever and they they erect, there must be a mutant that has like grit that has uh, uh granite powers because they erect a really nice unless he bought it a, a long time ago <laughs> Listen, i'm it, not gonna be around forever xavier's a guy who definitely i'm not gonna be around forever i better get my affairs in order <laughs> you know He's had that for a long time. Like, that statue originally had Xavier with hair on it. <laughs> and it was like, well, I've outlived this monument. Better get that chiseled off. His tombstone is also marketing future U.S. currency. Because it's yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is what the coin would look like. And I was like, oh, it looks good. They put me on the half dollar coin. <laughs> We haven't talked oh, about fucking Harriet Tubman on the twenty dollar <laughs> bill. Bullshit. What about me? I'm on metal. Of course I am, right, Eric? <laughs> Magneto. Well, we haven't talked about. We that. haven't talked about uh, Ellen Page. Oh yeah, oh, it's right. all up in this piece. Kitty Pride. Yeah, I think like I like Ellen Page quite a bit. I think she's a good Kitty Pride in this movie. I'm someone who I. I don't realize is the only thing that she can do run through walls is that her thing yeah, or does she have like yeah. other things going no, on? No, she could just she she could phase through things. She can go right. through so, floors. And okay, stuff. that's a good question. Now it's not just walls. Like theoretically, if she's outside, yeah, can she run through a tree? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty <laughs> cool. That's, that's pretty <laughs> sure. I like how Eric just stop. hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Walls. She run through a tree or what? Because <laughs> if it's like if your power is just like walls, I'm yeah. like how. Why? What is that? No, yeah, exactly. It's like no, technically this wasn't a wall because it was a theater flat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work. Yes, I thought maybe so. You know. Oh no, it's drywall. I can't run through drywall. <laughs> There's a weird moment in this movie though, and I don't remember if it's in the danger room sequence part or at like the end fight. But there's a weird part. I think it's at the end because they all have to like jump off the plane onto the battleground. Uh -huh. And she carries Bobby Drake, and they jump down, and they, like, phase through the ground, yeah. but then pop back up, and I'm like, 
who's responsible for that pop back? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, you're just kind of climbing through <laughs> dirt. Like, how would that even work? It makes no sense. No, I mean, and her, the problem with Kitty Pride is, is, like, she's one character too many for sure. Like, the, the, the subplot of uh, uh, Rogue B- Iceman and Kitty Pride is, like, the one thing where, like, we're not even talking about... Jean Grey at this point. No, and then it's, and that's, see, that's the problem. And it's like a bigger problem with like a movie like First Class, where it's like 50% of the storyline is X Men kids. Yeah. But like this movie dabbles into that X, it's like X Men High. Like, yeah. the, you know, they're fighting over, not fighting, but it's like, oh, Bobby Drake is a, attracted to Kitty Pride because they can like hold hands and yeah. they have a little like ice skating moment and whatnot. Right. Um, and then like Rogue's like jealous of that, but also like, Angry with herself because she understands like it's her power that blah blah blah. How they know. never figured out to do an OC TV show set in the X Men world? Just it'll that's happen. it. It's a delight. To <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. Yeah. I mean, the thing that this is a movie supposedly for adults, and that's why I prefer the Jules A. Jim relationship of Jean Grey, <laughs> Cyclops, and Wolverine, which is a much more complicated love triangle where it's really about love. It's not about just like having sex. It's yeah. like eventually that'll go away, and we just enjoy. All of our company together, we all balance each other. Well, out. the weird thing right. is, Jean Grey turns him down like a bunch in that second movie, and she's like, "I'm into that other dude. You're weird. Like, yeah, I'm kind of attracted to you, but that's it." And in this movie, it's like, "I love you," and she's like, "Yeah, I love you too." It's like, no, no, and it's like not. I just I don't care about any of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, even though it is the adults and it's not X Men High, I'm like, just isn't there something to be fought? Isn't there a giant <laughs> robot that might be doing something? <laughs> yes! yes. <laughs> this is around the time Magneto forms a Hooverville in the middle of the woods. <laughs> We're spending so much time hiding in the woods, and this is what they don't really establish either. And again, it's a deleted scene thing. But, like, there's one part where Magneto... Finds fi- Friar Tuck. There's <laughs> <laughs> enough wine for all my mutants. <laughs> Oh, man, I wish. <laughs> Magneto gives that, like, just out of nowhere press conference where yeah. he's like, I have a brotherhood and we're coming for that formula. And you're like, where is this office? Where is the camera equipment? And yeah. he's got, like, this layer that they never really yeah. outline. But a deleted scene told me. <laughs> oh, no. It's under that, like, forest encampment because there's a scene where, like, Aaron Stanton opens this, like, bomb shelter door in the middle of the woods and runs down a staircase and there's magneto like sitting there and he's like hey magneto they found a cure for mutinism like that's a deleted scene also weird in one of the like takes of this he has a beard magneto (laughs) and in another scene he doesn't (laughs) because we can't make up our mind about anything while making this movie i would have loved for magneto to have a beard oh yeah yeah it would have like at least it's some character progression and it tells you he's been hiding in this like little bunker sure but in the in the like theatrical cut of this movie he just has this bunker for a few scenes and it's never addressed i guess that's again in the super mixed metaphor of all this stuff that might be like Osama bin Laden, Magneto kind of. Sure. Like he does have a press conference where he's like, well, he's well bunker like that. It's a little bit more Saddam Hussein. Well, he, to the, be fair, the funny thing is Fox News has it as like Magneto issues threat, which is kind of <laughs> amazing. At what point? When does this movie come out? I mean, we're preoccupy Wall Street, right? Yeah. Even time. though, oh, even time. though visually this, this is... place is Occupy Wall Street with a little bit of a better agenda, <laughs> <laughs> clearer goals. <laughs> This is 2006. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a while before all that, but yeah, it's, so then you, you're right. It's like, well, it's a Hooverville. That's like the next closest (laughs) thing we have. The weird thing is Magneto gives this speech and like Jean Grey's just sitting there filing her nails. Like I thought I was the villain in this movie. And he gives this speech about like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to destroy the cure. And this, that, and the other thing is that the cure is evil. We're going to destroy the cure. And by the way, any mutants that don't believe with us, we're going to use the cure on them. And I'm like, wait, isn't that against all of your beliefs? Well, I mean, that's well, that's the thing. It's it's not so I don't think a goal of theirs is to destroy the cure. I yeah. mean, it's to destroy humanity and uh-huh. non-mutants and Got rise it. up as like the majority in the world. So, and also we'll use this cure against any mutants that don't sign on with and us. And does that mean their end game would be to kill those former mutants that are now human then? Oh, you're yeah. saying right. they're going to kill all humans? 
Yeah, I get well, like or at least like rise up and be they are the controlling superior them. race. I mean, races. come on, Magneto. <laughs> Haven't you learned anything? Seriously, <laughs> that's the thing. Magneto just really just did not get it. You he know didn't what I mean? Get it. He went through it all, but he just didn't get it. <laughs> no, I won't learn from history. <laughs> on with my genocide campaign. <laughs> He says from his central air bunker below, <laughs> where everybody else is sweating it out upstairs oh, in the Redwoods. That's, that's a real, like, Jim Jones situation. Like, everyone else has, the plebes have to be up there. Now, my mutants, drink my powerful Kool-Aid. <laughs> well, it's like, oh, we don't, we don't watch human television. And he closes the door and he watches, like, Dharma and Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the Fuhrer's bunker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You can only watch mutant produced and created sitcoms, <laughs> but I will enjoy the hilarious comedic genius of Dharma and Greg. <laughs> Jenna Elfman, I would have loved her to be a mutant too. What comedic timing she has. Gone too soon, my mutant Dom and Greg DVDs. <laughs> he clutches to them. My babies. All of my babies. <laughs> I guess. All of his speeches are just recaps of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> this is as if your mother-in-law visited for the long weekend. <laughs> Uh, this is also the sequence where, like, and again, it makes no sense why Phoenix just doesn't destroy Magneto. There's that moment where he's like, I can manipulate the metal in this gun, but you, you can do anything you want with it. And it's because like, your powers are ill-defined. Yeah, and she, like, <laughs> she, like, uh, you know, takes it apart in the little cure needles and he, like, you know, is threatened by her. Like, Gene, stop that, you yeah. know. Again, Another thing, deleted scene, alternate take, can't make up our minds in this movie. He does it with, there's another take where it's not a, a cure gun, but it's like a tin cup. Uh-huh. And like something you put like a fucking Moscow mule in. And <laughs> he's like, I can just manipulate the metal in this. And then it's like, <laughs> it's a computer cup like floats yeah. up. And, you know, and he goes like, he says the same line, like, but you can do anything with it. And Phoenix takes it crushes it into a ball that starts glowing green and then explodes over the forest and all the mutants in the little Hooverville are starting to like flick away like she does later in the movie. Like they start falling apart and they're all screaming and shit. And he's like, Gene, stop that. Stop, stop that. what? Stop what? What, what are, is she doing? What is happening? I don't know. Like she's just like using some sort of energy force to take them apart. Green, but there's no green energy. No. Green energy is another movie franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes no sense. And it's like, why would you even do this? Because then clearly all of these people in the Hooverville would be like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> and just leave. So like, why bother filming this? What I mean, and it's a completed thing. Like, there's yeah. computer graphics in it. Like, well, the, what the, a stupid decision! I mean, to I make think that's that. the idea. Is that the script was like probably 400 pages long, and we'll just shoot what we can. <laughs> it was and a make choose it your own adventure, <laughs> 400 page script, and things got missed. Uh, the, the, this leads to Magni. Uh, Wolverine has a stupid fight in the forest, and that does nothing. I don't even know how he finds. The, yeah, hey, I don't know get, where the forest is. You're, he's giving his speech, right? Yeah. All the bad mutants are watching over, and then suddenly, um, uh, uh, Magneto starts to hear something. He's like, "What's that?" You hear? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wolverine. Well, he sneaks into the camp by putting a raincoat on and putting a hood. And it's like Jason Bourne <laughs> hiding out. And he just like watches the speech from afar. And uh -huh. I, yeah, they don't explain how he finds them, but it's like his nipple. Just, <laughs> the nipple goes out and like sniffs things around and like follows some clues. The nipple's having its own adventure, like its own movie. <laughs> it's part of the 400 pages of that script. It's just, I mean, like, and again, yeah, Wolverine would be the second most famous mutant at this point. Everybody, like, oh, it's Wolverine. Hey, Wolverine. Hi, Wolverine. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, hey, Wolverine's joining our cause. How cool is that? Maybe we have a man on the inside now. He Honey, could. I met Wolverine. <laughs> Honey, Wolverine told me to go fuck myself this afternoon. <laughs> Ooh, if Twitter that's, a, that's a memory. If Twitter existed, people taking pictures. Oh, Wolverine's here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Twitter would have destroyed this little undercover operation Wolverine's going for in this movie. He kills like ten people, and then like Magneto like knocks him into the next county, and that's the end of that scene. And then he's like, "Oh, we have to go stop Magneto." 
So this is no blood too. He like murders people. He there's some bone Wolverine. Oh, thing. that guy who's like hucking shark teeth at people. <laughs> <laughs> and so every time those shark teeth penetrate Wolverine, he's bleeding. But that's okay because he'll fucking CGI recover. Yeah. But then he fucking shoves those blades into that guy's chest and pulls him out, and it's just like nothing. Clean. Yeah. Cleans themselves yeah. right when they get pulled out of a human body. Yeah, it's weird. I, it would be awesome if he was just covered in blood after. Yeah. Like, oh my god, this guy is still bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing I I don't want to miss because it's just like it it it's a real testament to like nobody thinking about how this movie's being made at all. And I'm sorry to go back all this way, but it's like when they go to Jean Grey's house the second time, like yeah. uh, you know when Xavier gets killed. Xavier, Storm, and Wolverine get out of the car, and they're like, all right, here's the house. And they're in this, like, Jean, the, the Gray family lives on this cul-de-sac. And so they get out of the car in this tiny cul-de-sac, and they're like, here we go. And they take one step forward, and then they look, and Patrick Stewart's like, what are you doing here? And Magneto is standing right there. <laughs> now... When you pull up into a cul-de-sac, <laughs> you can see everybody who's also pulled up in that cul-de-sac. Oh, you mean even That's an right. 80-year-old man in a purple helmet and a black cape? <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who has just traversed on foot 50 miles to get here? And Juggernaut's... Yeah, he walked. Well, Juggernaut's there, too. I'm like, dude, you would see all of these people. Yep. How do you hide Juggernaut? Oh, I, was, I was hiding in the bushes. Here comes Juggy. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, Juggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, the end of this movie, I guess, or the, the last act is, to Sean's point, Magneto will not charter a boat. Like, you know, uh, nope. Worthington Labs is located, which uh, IMDb points out is really stupid, on uh, 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 Alcatraz, yeah. which is a, a reserve. Like, that's a na- you, you can't buy Ellis Island, uh, 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 Alcatraz Island. Like, that's a real tourist thing like there's it's a national yeah, but dude, it's a it's national like, park but it's like i think also though there's like government funding involved sure. here so it's probably just a quick thing of like revoke that landmark yeah. status yeah. of, of yeah. all the logic problems in this <laughs> yeah. film, that one i'm gonna let slide yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna fight over fucking federal landmarks Steve. <laughs> but i've been to alcatraz it's a 12 minute ride by boat it's a nice little boat ride uh-huh. but magneto's like Fuck it. And he takes the entire <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge and just like jimmies it a bit so that he could walk across to Alcatraz. And it yeah. takes forever and it makes no sense. And we no. have to experience it with some family in the car as our protagonist yeah. for no reason. That's and they're, like, Which is locking the door or interesting something. Interesting because there's like a new, I, I think it's a new commercial, now, a car commercial or something that's doing the exact same thing for Civil War where you like experience oh, yeah. what it's like if you were a family, a nuclear family in a car while <laughs> Captain America's running experience around. Experience what it would be like to be a casualty. <laughs> <laughs> But funny enough, in this sequence, too, I don't know if you guys spot this. They they make a nice racist joke for everyone. Oh, to no, enjoy. I missed it. Well, while the while the bridge is being moved, there's uh, obviously Asian tourists with cameras. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, they have to take the pictures of everything. And this is what's insane it's, about it's in it, fucking though. 1989. Yeah. That's what this joke is. Yeah, no, And it's so stupid because it's after, like, they... Like you see all these cars start crashing into each other and you're like, oh, Magneto's manipulating them. And it's this massive pile up and then he shoves all the cars to the side and then the bridge starts breaking. And then we cut to this gigantic group of Asian tourists. The photo is taken. They start screaming and it's like, why would they not notice that? Before, right when yeah, stuff yeah. starts happening, like, yeah. holy fuck, that was a massive car accident on this bridge. Let's stop posing for a photograph. <laughs> like, or, it's timed so poorly. The use binoculars, see the 80 year old man in a purple helmet. Oh, fuck, it's Magneto, the most famous man in the world. The most recognizable. <laughs> Here's that guy that gave that press conference yesterday. <laughs> Didn't he, like, attack Ellis Island once? And yeah. he, like... oh, oh, yeah, it was that guy. Imagine Saddam Hussein wearing all maroon in the middle of. <laughs> the Golden Gate Bridge <laughs> with superpowers. You're not going to notice? Yeah, you'll notice him. It's, it's just funny because, like, it makes no sense. Like, also, if you're, if you're Magneto, the, your point is to take over this facility. How about some stealth, dude? Like, you know what I mean? Now, like, <laughs> by moving a bridge, you're going to er, er, get the ire of the U.S. military. 
Uh, then um, uh, uh, he does a rope a dope with multiple men. They're like, oh, we know where Ma- where Magneto is. He's right. in the woods, and then it was all multiple men. And his second line is, "You got me." So his oh, lines great. are. I'm in, and you got me. That's, that's, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying about yes. minimal story arcs. Yeah. Let's do it. It's over. <laughs> exactly. and it's the like, beginning, the end. <laughs> Why did he even join? Like, no, what, is, exactly. what does his motivation do? And he's just like, okay, uh, you got me out of jail. All right, I'll go back to jail now with a harsher plan. <laughs> well, because I think, like, executed now. Yeah. Like, the, the version of multiple men in this world is he's one of those, like, scumbag repeat offenders that's just like, yeah, I don't give a fuck if I go back to prison. Let whatever hurt people yeah exactly like he's just like supposed to be like a scuzzball like, they're, gonna, no. they're gonna hang him <laughs> <laughs> at the same time all, all of them. Seven of them we got <laughs> plenty of rope multiple men <laughs> so when the when when magnus bringing the bridge across and you know ever since he watched his good friend uh, uh professor x get incinerated he's been saying like that's one of the greatest minds of our of our lifetime like yeah. he feels something about it he feels bad about it he's yeah, trying sure. to hide it but when he's bringing this bridge over to alcatraz he goes charles always wanted us to build bridges yeah. <laughs> he just digs at his dead friend for no yep. reason because yeah you're right because earlier in the movie like pyro says to magneto like yeah i would have taken the old man out if i had the chance and he's like charles xavier was the has done more for mutant kind than you'll ever know in your life or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay. And that's cool because then that is like the respect, that, that, that's yeah. respect and the constant tug of war of these two great characters. And then he's like, joke pun about building bridges <laughs> for that dead, bald fuck. <laughs> is that a deleted scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the one language of the risks. Up. I like how so many of these d- deleted scenes are like, uh, Brett Ratner say, like, have fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, they're yeah. riffing these like, garbage lines. There's also when the bridge is moving. I should have built a ramp for Charles, <laughs> right, everybody? And everyone's like, oh, Magneto, that's a poor taste. <laughs> Ian, can you go a little lighter on this next take? Um, There's a cutaway when the bridge is moving. This, pre- I mean, this president is so useless in this <laughs> to the point where he has the universal president disaster line of "Then God help us all." Oh, God. While he's looking at a TV monitor. And did you guys see this? I did, I don't know what exactly part he played. Obviously, yeah. everyone's got like a nothing part. But Bill Duke is in this movie. Yeah, Bill Duke though, like and. Right, I'm I'm not wrong in this. Bill Duke is playing a character named Trask, which is Bolivar Trask, like the guy who makes the Sentinel program. Yeah, it's oh, he's really? Peter Dinklage in oh, fucking what? Days of Future Past. Wait, you you know- didn't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, all right, hold 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 the phone for a okay. second. <laughs> yeah, we can stop. All right. we'll pause. Take it off the radio now. Is this canon? Is this is this? Is this well, the weird movie t- we're, canon? we're told that all these movies exist in the same world because of Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and because he ties it all together. At the end of uh Days of Future Past, like they basically undo this movie. That's the whole point of Days of Future Past, is like, oh, the timeline's different now. Like as of days as of the end of Days of Future Past, this movie will never have happened. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't make sense because Bill Duke is Bill Duke and Peter Dink. I don't think you could find <laughs> two more disparate actors. <laughs> <laughs> you have that like part of you know how like when Wes Anderson puts out movies he puts out like a little short ahead of time to tease yeah right. but prior to Days of Future Past there's this little tease of uh, of of Bill Duke as Trask, Trask like his wife being like well I always imagined you as a different man it's like the Giving Tree where he goes through all these operations and becomes Peter <laughs> Dinklage. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I wish you were smaller. No, smaller. <laughs> well, that, that, would be, a- that would be an interesting short, actually. You know, you could go to Sundance with that. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Dinklage is a Sundance darling ever since a station agent. Though, you'd, you'd at least get a slam dance. Entry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking about the uh, basically it would be a, a pre movie short where. Uh, uh, Kitty Pride and uh, Bobby Drake are in in Paris for some reason, <laughs> and they've had this like tumultuous relationship, and they're about yeah. to have sex. And she has weird bruises on her body. And you're like, wow, something's gone on between these two. You're talking about Hotel Chevalier, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that that was really saying something. <laughs> so uh, towards the beginning, uh, uh, Kitty Pride is like, but I'm not really that into you, Bobby Drake. <laughs> The weird thing is, uh, so Rogue, uh, by the way, wants to get the cure. And everyone's like, fuck 
you, Rogue. And it's like, <laughs> well, actually, she can't connect. Like, everyone, like, yeah. tries to tell Rogue how to live her life because they're like, oh, you're just giving up on the cause. Well, that's like, so Rogue gets, like, the abortion storyline. Yeah, and it's weird. Like, it's, like it, again, the metaphor is so mixed. Like, yeah, you'd... There are, like, the idea of, like, oh, you can cure homosexuality. That's a bad idea. Like, the idea that, like, uh, uh, you can erase, like, black culture by, like, making them more white, et cetera. Like, that's what the cure is. And I understand, like, that's a bad thing. But if you are a person that can't ever physically connect with somebody because of your mutant power... That's not a bad thing to get a cure, right? Yeah, like, Am they're I not all gifts. Like, Rogue's <laughs> thing isn't really a gift. It's it's way more of, like, a curse for her. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, the only way she uses it, like, to her advantage is when, um, you know, like, Wolverine accidentally guts her or something. And yeah. then, like, she sucks his healing power into right. her and then doesn't die. She's, I mean, I think the problem with, like comic book nerdy the problem with rogue is that jean gray exists always like right. rogue yeah. could very much be the jean gray of this world yeah because she's got like an incredible power that's incredibly tragic yeah mm-hmm. which is actually more interesting than the jean gray thing which is like you have no idea how powerful she is yeah yeah, yeah. right you're like okay but how powerful is she she's a level five okay but what's the scale <laughs> to <laughs> oh the you level know? five get out of town <laughs> well that's fucking what? tornadoes <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> Welcome to the suck zone with Jean Grey. <laughs> it's like, what? Is, did somebody get her magic card? Like, how do you know? Is, what does that even mean? Well, it makes even less. Like, I can understand. All right, like Charles Xavier throwing out a level five, right? But like, there's that one mutant that joins up with Magneto. Yeah, the chick who's like uh, Callisto. Callisto, so she can like sense other mutants and like she can she can gauge what their powers are. She's like. <laughs> There's a level five around here. And I'm like, why are you using level five? <laughs> like, That's our word. No, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, There's also a level four nipple. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. If the cure came out, like everyone's like, oh, fuck the cure. But the first two people in line are Rogue and the Blob. Because the Blob's <laughs> power is that he's morbidly obese. Yeah, that's like, a problem. Yeah, I'll just take <laughs> this poor something. mutant heart's gonna give out one day. <laughs> they should they should show more of the tragic ones because there's got to be a, more mutants that are have shitty. Oh things. yeah, no, like sure. what's his name from the first episode who gets turned into like a water thing? Oh, the water jelly of <laughs> Bruce oh, Davison. Right. Water oh, jelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'd be right, right there. <laughs> My mutant power is water jelly. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you get to the front. Of the, like, there should it should be voluntary and it should be fine. <laughs> and that's what I mean. So Rogue's thing is because uh, Anna Paquin's just not in this movie. Um, they never she, knew what to do with her again. No, it's the Wolverine show. Like the fir- the first movie is really good because they balance those two stories, and that's like she's our eyes and ears, et cetera, et cetera. Right. 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 And once X Men Two starts, like, eh, and then like, I don't need Mag- you. Like I know how to operate through this world on my own. And the the only good thing about Rogue in the second movie is Magneto's catty comment about her hair, which is <laughs> my favorite line in any movie. It's just it's it's uh, Ian McKellen and Rebecca Romijn Stamos like on the the Blackbird, and like they're snickering to themselves it's like what, and they're like. We love what you did with your hair. They kind of cackled at each other. All right, I understand why it's on the top. (laughs) Yeah, come on. They also (laughs) they know what to do with Rogue and Wolverine in that first movie, and by this point, both of those characters are so awful to watch. Yeah, and like, and Wolverine's a good. I mean, uh, uh, Hugh Jackman's a really great casting job as as Wolverine in that first movie. Sure, because you're like, I don't know who this guy is, and he's great. And then, like, slowly but surely, you realize he's a song and dance man from Australia. <laughs> yeah. That really adjusts how you perceive him as Wolverine. Which is why I think he's juicing in that last one. Because it's like, no, I'm not fucking singing and dancing. I'm a big goddamn animal monster. <laughs> so they fight, right? It's a big war. Um, on a soundstage. On the, you always yeah. like, I hate these <laughs> battle scenes because you just don't get to see any sky. Yeah. Right? Everything's a top down shot, and you're like, where are we? It's like, yeah, yeah we're in Alcatraz. Don't look for water around this small <laughs> island. And this fight is boring. It's yeah, oh, it's, it's my really favorite boring. part. Oh, please. The best, <laughs> the best part is when and we, I watched this last night. I was laughing my ass. <laughs> oh, please. Beast goes, oh, get everybody out of there. <laughs> And then, like, an impossible amount of army guys, like, flee this bunker. Yeah. <laughs> like, on the voice of a on? blue monster. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ba- it, it's my favorite Kelsey Grammer line in the middle of the oh, fight. He's yeah. fighting with a bunch of people, and, like, Wolverine's like, oh, I thought you were a pacifist. He's like, 
Well, as Churchill once said, there comes a time when, ah, you get the point. Man, (laughs) ah, you get the point. I mean, that was like in the trailer. Uh, It was just, it's the most Kelsey Grammarist line. It's so funny because you also can see a bunch of shots of Kelsey Grammar making lion noises. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Those are stupid. Like, the thing that's, again, just to go back to these deleted scenes, what they do in this moment, there's a bunch of stuff that's cut out that's that makes these characters, like, way more violent. So, like, there's definitely a scene where Beast just quickly flips this dude's head and breaks this guy's what? neck. There's a thing where awesome. Storm... Like, this would all make it more awesome, right? Storm creates a big tidal wave uh-huh. and washes out a bunch of these guys. Okay. And then so... That dude fat, who's like a fake X Man, yeah. who like in Wait, the ch- not blob. Yeah, it's not blob, right? right? The dude who's like in the church scene. There's a big fat guy who comes up and he's gonna sit between uh, the two people in this really narrow space, and then he shrinks down, and everybody yeah. laughs about it. That dude comes back and he's like running at Iceman, and Iceman freezes him, and then Colossus smashes him to pieces and kills him. <laughs> oh, really? It's awesome. And I'm like, what? And they all, that's the thing that sucks. They all take two seconds. And it's like, this movie's not even two hours. Leave those in. And then you can show that great moment after the battle when that uh, ice starts to thaw, and it's just like pieces, <laughs> of, pieces of fat. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fat and the character spelling, by the way, is of course P H A T. Well, that that must have uh, triggered the world's most saddest racist because Fat is a character from the comics. Oh, is he? Uh, and he's a white guy, and they made him like he's uh, like Samoan, a- I Samoan think. or whatever. So there must have been the one guy in the audience a who knew who Fat was and b who was upset about it. <laughs> was it you? No, it was not. <laughs> oh, Bob, they made Fat Samoan come in here and trick me off. <laughs> <laughs> he needs it, the only, but only one guy that time. Also, Colossus is a waste of time. The, the, Colossus, Colossus is, is not Russian in this movie. He's not Russian in the first one. Oh, is that he's right? He's in the second one. He's, he's it, just this white. Isn't he like, like uh, but he still has a name. So it's like as if he's like uh, Piotr, you know, yeah. a yeah, an adopted, you know, like in, an infant Russian. Who, <laughs> well, it's not because they, they, the your sound is gone and they yeah. just call him like Pete. Yeah. Like, because there's one part where Wolverine's like, Hey, Pete, you see whoever? And he's like, I don't know, Logan. And that's you're just like, God <laughs> damn it. That's his only line. He's holding a TV. Oh, right. For some <laughs> just this big old he's boxy looting. TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because Xavier is dead. Like, oh, got that big <laughs> I'm gonna think, uh, This I'm place gonna... is closing up. <laughs> or maybe it's like when, you know, when, when your family, when somebody moves out and, like, you take your big brother's TV. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to go into Xavier's room. Nobody got dibs on, dibs on his TV. Man, I would hope that Charles Xavier had a better TV. <laughs> in his room in this, though. Oh, that fucking that- Colossus is taking my television. <laughs> <laughs> From beyond the group. Yes. <laughs> he's a ghost. Yeah. yeah, he's a ghosting around the Xavier <laughs> Mansion. Oh no, Rogue has all of my books. <laughs> That's um during that scene too. They're like, well, how will we afford to le- keep this uh, expensive Westchester, New York property open? And then that's the only other blip of story arc for Angel, yeah. who walks in and then dollar signs appear in Storm's eyes, <laughs> and she's like, "Let's get to class." <laughs> Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Like, well, Beast is like, well, uh, we must close down the school. It was Charles's dream. And and then, like, uh, Warren comes in. He's like, I thought this was a safe place for mutant. And she's like, yeah, go tell the students the school will remain open. Like, nobody told the students the school was closed. <laughs> no, and they didn't even go to that dude's funeral. They're not even sure what's going on. And why is Iceman and Kitty Pride in on this teacher meeting? Like, Cyclo- why are they? <laughs> Cyclops' 1030 lit class is just sitting in a classroom. <laughs> like, where is our teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows Cyclops I, is dead during this movie. You know, God damn it! I stayed up till two a.m. doing all this Faulkner reading to be prepared for class today, and that fucking asshole can't even show up. The stupid sunglasses. I don't even know what his power is because we have no information here. Oh, all man. these fucking G grade X Men. I got I got Xavier's class next, man. I don't know. This is gonna be a tough block. <laughs> So do we just get like a pass fail? Because it's not our fault that he's not here. <laughs> During this like big end fight sequence, I realize, and this is like an hour and a half past this happening, yeah. that Cyclops is actually dead. <laughs> like, because I'm convinced, I'm like, oh, we didn't see him die. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. something's gonna happen. He's not, nobody really felt his death. He's coming back. Oh, he's 
it's going to end. He's yeah. dead. Oh, this is over with, and James Marsden hasn't reared his head around the corner <laughs> to save the day. I, I think that's supposed to be exemplified by those sunglasses smashing, by the way. Right. Like, that's, you know, Scott's cool sunglasses disintegrate, and, like, that's officially <laughs> the, the end, end of the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. now imagining, like, that class is just still there, and Colossus just walks by with a TV, <laughs> and Iceman's got an air conditioner. Like, yeah, they're all fucking dead, dude. <laughs> Dibs on their stuff. <laughs> I took Colossus's cool Bob Marley and Reservoir Dogs posters off the wall. <laughs> Gonna put these up in my dorm room. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. um. So there's the the sequence of like during the big fight, Kitty Pride is like running through the yep. walls trying to get to Leech. Right? Yep. Yeah. Here's Juggy, and, and this is where they hear <laughs> Juggy. Unfortunately, doesn't actually happen. 2006 is Cameron Bright, who is in this and Godsend. He's oh. in. He's the kid from Birth. The kid the from yeah, Birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she gets to him, and you're like, "Oh, save that child." But that child's got like six to eight inches on Ellen Page. Yeah. yeah. And it's just this kind of weird moment where you're like, oh, okay. I viewed this character entirely differently. I'm just imagining like he's just like playing, because he's playing PlayStation 2 this whole movie. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this woman walks through his door. He's like, did I dream you? (laughs) And then then Juggy shows up. Juggy shows up and like (laughs) runs into a wall. She like tricks him like Bugs Bunny. (laughs) <laughs> and he knocks himself out because I guess that stupid helmet's really hard or whatever. Well, because he has no power. To right, he, he gets leeched. Yeah, and yeah. Well, it's it's fine. But wouldn't he like turn into a really skinny dude or at least just regular Vinnie Jones at that point? Well, isn't his like actual power that he can get like momentum really fast? That's right? what it like, is in this movie. But for again, stuff that shouldn't be in X Men movies, uh, <laughs> Juggernaut actually has a power. From a, a uh, ancient Egyptian ruby that Holy makes him invincible. Shit. This, yeah. is, this is pretty awesome. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about this ruby. Oh, the uh, the ruby of Sidorak, I believe it is. Wow. Hachi yeah, Macho. Yeah. So did he, <laughs> did he steal it from a mummy? <laughs> <laughs> Like he's just he's actually just Xavier's like shitty half brother that used to make fun of him. And then like he grabs this ruby and turns it into the world's biggest dick. That's amazing. Uh, So, yeah, we just have this big fight. They're all sort of defeated. Uh, They do this whole big trick on Magneto where like they do the Wolverine toss again. And he's like, you're so stupid, boy. You don't learn. And he's like, actually, I did. And then, like, Beast comes up from behind him and stabs Magneto with this cure. With yeah. the three, and there's three darts. Yeah. yeah. And and they all, they see the darts earlier in the sequence and all look at each other, right? So yeah. you have this moment, you're like, cool. Three characters are about to get it. And then yeah. like, all three hit Magneto. Oh, yeah, right in, man. You're getting the fucking hot shot right in your heart. <laughs> Here's a question about the hot shot, though. So they're all like, oh, we got to kill the kid. We got to kill the kid. We got to get the kid. Like, they've already synthesized the cure from him. Yeah. What is even the point of him being on site anymore? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think is it's, it, it's, is it his tears? What What is the <laughs> cure? I mean, they don't really explain, but right. It's like maybe with the blood. So like you need the kid. To oh, keep, like every couple of you're going to like run out of good blood. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're going to like run out of ingredients to, you know, make the formula. You got to but, but the first batch is complete. So mm. they could use that all they want. Right, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's what's weird because Magneto, right, he wants to use this weapon as a threat to mutants who don't join him. Yeah. But he also wants to kill the kid. Yeah. So eventually you're going to run out of ammo, you know, and the good mutants will again be a problem for you. It's almost as if this movie is poorly planned out because Jean Grey, <laughs> again, like the, this entire fight is just kind of hanging out in the back. And I'm like, what is your mission? What are you trying to do? You should be the most important character in this movie. And you have like nine lines. And then she just sort of goes batshit. She, yeah. she goes batshit. She kills a bunch of people. She's throwing buildings She's and like everything. It's like a curing. It's like an, a whole Akira thing. She's yeah. just fucking exploding and every and the, and the army comes in. This is when your favorite moment of like, get out of <laughs> okay, there. Right, and yeah. a cloud car of, of army men <laughs> rolls out of a small building. There's like 3,000 people. <laughs> Yeah, oh, like, wait, I'm, Kelsey Grammer told us to leave. Let's and get all out he here. did was, out, while outside, <laughs> in a huge commotion going on, get everyone out of there. Hey, that sounds like the director of Mutant Affairs. Better get out of here. And everyone runs. 
three thousand people, and and they all start. So so Jean Grey is like freaking out because yeah. you know she's a two faced woman, and mm-hmm. this is the whole thing. So she's freaking out a little. The star and jammers are nowhere to be seen. Star That's jammers the are real no crime, <laughs> and everybody starts disintegrating. I mean, this is like massacre time. Everybody's just getting destroyed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because they paid for this, you know, special effects patch, and they're going to get their money. Through. Oh yeah, and like Wolverine gets up there, and like he's like she's trying to disintegrate him, but his powers are like so incredible that they it, it, it doesn't stick on him which is a little bit implausible to me i'm told she's a class five mutant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't he's, know that there's other class fives like wolverine's not no, a if class you read five. the back of his card he's a class four but he's got a blocker for class five. <laughs> oh, you know so that's a, yeah. if he was like an adamantium skeleton walking towards her <laughs> that's what sequence, i that want cool. a fucking hugh jackman terminator <laughs> yeah like, like half face coming up to her oh yeah, yeah. And this nipple is just still surviving. <laughs> oh, God. But there's this scene where, like, in the last movie, she did reject him. She's like, dude, I chose that other guy. I love that other guy. And he's like, I love Eugene. And she's like, I love you, too. And I'm like, what the fuck movie am I watching? And the whole time, every time she comes out, like, yeah. that little bit of real Jean Grey that's left, she comes out and he's like, oh, and she just goes, kill me. <laughs> yeah, she kill me right now. To be fair yeah. to your argument, yeah. she she doesn't say, I love you back. Yeah. She turns to Jean Grey, like Sean said, and she's like, you know, help me, kill me, whatever it is. And he says, I love you, and then guts her like a fucking fish. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> she, fun. She says, I don't love you. You know who I love. And then on his shoulder, you hear... <laughs> And then she kisses his, third, his his wandering nipple and then gets stabbed. Well, his other nipple is in Panama working on, on a different case. <laughs> this, this, these nipples, drug runners. <laughs> these nipples rob two banks at once. <laughs> Disgusting. I mean, that's kind of the end of the movie. They wrap it up. Uh, Beast gets promoted to like vice president or something. <laughs> Is that how it works? I don't know. This is what's awful, though. It's like the president, you know, uh, uh, stunt double Jonathan Price is like, well, we've promoted you to, like, represent, be be an ambassador for all. He's the United States ambassador in the United Nations. Right. And which is all well and good, except fuck you, president. You're the reason this shit happened. Like, you just leaded this, like, let's get rid of uh, mutants uh, 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 initiative. And now you're like, well, it didn't work out. So we're going to promote you, Hank. Yeah, that's a classic flip flopper. This guy's not coming back in 2012. Swift voted him. Yeah, this guy's out in November. Don't worry about (laughs) it. (laughs) This fucking catastrophe that he orchestrated. (laughs) But what I love about it. He's going to pardon multiple men on the way out. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a January 19th pardon. Don't worry about it. And then multiple men will say, I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, good. (laughs) But multiple men, because I say multiple words sometimes. (laughs) What I realized, and I've only seen this movie like a couple times, but it only dawned on me last night, is the end of this movie is Kelsey Grammer, the actor, right? And he's playing Hank McCoy, who gets promoted to a UN ambassador. So in reality... We have Kelsey Grammer actually posing as a UN ambassador, which is what he's saying when he falls off that stage in that awesome video. I it's something that. about like, oh, I spent my time posing as a UN ambassador. <laughs> Do you think that's what that's it? Because that was also on E Bomb's world. So clearly Brett oh. Ratner liked oh. liked the Juggernaut Bitch right. video and he liked that video. <laughs> so he got both of them in this. He's a real fan. Those are Easter eggs. <laughs> he e- might E Bomb Easter eggs. <laughs> he might be E Bomb. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Brett Ratner is E Bomb. Hashtag. <laughs> we're just we're just living in his world. <laughs> And yeah, it's like the school will fight another day. It's like a new school there, session. I, and I don't mean to bring us back too far, but in the same way that we get, have a God help us line from the present, we also, yeah. when Jean Grey's freaking out, oh, yeah. we get this awful oh, like, yes. line from Magneto that's just like, what have I done? Yeah, yeah he's like running away because he's just a person at that point. Oh. Like, oh, what have I done? It doesn't make any sense. Like, what is his motivation? What's her motivation? How he wanted this. He shouldn't feel bad about yeah, how he, he should wanted be like, this now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it worked. That'd be great. Like, be, that's probably the deleted scene where he goes, oh, fuck yeah. Hang ten, dudes. <laughs> He gets in a car, a convertible, with a bodacious blonde. 
time to haul ass to Lollapalooza. <laughs> oh, uh, and then, so we return to the the school. We get like a nice yeah. sequence of everybody's gravestone who died. <laughs> Man, they're filling up that cemetery <laughs> fast, huh? <laughs> and then, uh, and then you see all the kids coming back. And the thing I don't understand is why would you let that leech kid enroll in your school? Yep, I, he's no. got, well, he's got to be in X Men Special Ed. He's got to be in a different <laughs> class. <laughs> He does though. Think about it. He can't. well, that could be that could be a sequel. X Men different class <laughs> because like he would hamper the student he the students around. Their ability. He's I was he's like the drug dealer on campus now because he's like, listen, you want to get normal? Want to get, get normal for a little bit? It would be, come come to my room and play Xbox. It, well, that's the thing. The funny thing is, Rogue does actually get the cure. That's like a, a big, long lasting effect that actually gets erased in that that. First class. Hey, you want to you want to know something? What's that? There's an alternate take where she also decides not to do it. Oh, who would have guessed? Because and 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 it's it's so oh god, it's so dumb because it's the same scene where she's like, you know, I I had to do it, Bobby. You know, this is me. And then like in in the movie we see, she holds out her hand. She doesn't have the glove on, and they hold hands. And he's like, I get it. There's the alternate take where she's like, I couldn't do it, Bobby. This is who I am. And she holds her hand out, and she's got the fucking glove on. <laughs> oh, I will just do it twice, man. glove and no glove. It's but, good. And this yep. is the whole thing. It's like, I'm sure Brett Ratner, because he's clearly not a great filmmaker, is thinking like, well, let's shoot both and decide later, which shows that you have no conviction about your storyline. No. And so neither one's going to be good later, because there's no forward thrust to what should be happening in a movie. To be fair, he is E-bomb, so he's <laughs> contributed more to film than most. <laughs> but here's, I mean, it's even down to the slightest nothing details, right? So when Leech comes up, he gives uh, Halle Berry a big hug, right? Yeah. And she's like, hey, little guy. And like, he runs in, right? In an alternate take, Bobby Drake is also standing there dressed as a teacher. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like what like what why why what here's why the, in the world where rogue doesn't get the cure the i mean unfortunately the only way like she's got to have like leech in the room when things go, or maybe she goes next like, like maybe there's, like, a oh next, yes a next door situation Dude, it's we close. always yeah. got to be next door neighbors with leech <laughs> if we want to get down bobby, to fucking leech better be home <laughs> bobby i think you should room with leech <laughs> <laughs> Is, is he asleep yet? Okay, good. <laughs> They're always doing it when I'm in the room. <laughs> you know what, Leech? I I know you're close to your family, man, but you gotta stop going home on weekends. <laughs> um, is anyone else thinking three way? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am now. Well, you know, they'd wait a couple of years for Leech yeah. to get to where get to where he needed to get to. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a lo- that's level five fucking. <laughs> Oh. The whole thing, like the whole choose your own adventure shit, right? So you have like Rogue, you know, will she, you know, choose? Does yeah. she take the cure or doesn't she take the cure? Right. Or at the beginning of the film, you have Wolverine and it's like, choose, follow Logan back to Westchester <laughs> or follow this nipple to Brazil. <laughs> I'd be nipple to Brazil, man. Well, talk about blame it on Rio. The, the weird <laughs> thing is, so like um, they undo two of the big things that happen in this movie at the end of it. Uh, one of which is Magneto. The last shot of the movie proper is Magneto in a park, sitting in front of a chest. That's pretty sad, uh, dude. I, I, it made me so sad. Like this, <laughs> this is why Ian McKellen is such a great actor. Like you see this shot of like a bunch of people in the park, everybody's playing chess, and then there's poor Magneto. Magneto, Andrew, sitting alone, and I'm like. Oh, man, look at this poor old man. He's so sad. No one's playing chess with him. But he moves a metal piece, so it's like, oh, I guess that cure was bullshit yep. after all. The whole so conflict guess... of this film doesn't matter. So yeah. actually, that's that that bodes poorly for Rogue and Iceman. Like, that, that's a mid-situation, right? Like, oh, yeah, totally. It's like, oh, it's fucking finally here. Oh, what? Then... <laughs> time, time for another grave out of here. <laughs> R.I.P.D. Iceman. <laughs> But then also, uh, that means that like Mystique's just going to turn back. Yep, you know yep. that undoes all of that. And then in a the Fox version of these stinger scenes, yep. and actually like Fox is doing it first. This is 06. But that Kevin Feige's a producer on this. Yes, by the way. yeah, he totally is. And um, because the first Iron Man is the next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so the end of the credits in this is Moira McTaggart played by uh, what's her face Olivia Williams. Olivia Williams from Rushmore. Totally nothing role in this movie. Uh, it's a cutback from uh, Xavier's teaching class, and he's like, like it's like ethics of mutant kind or whatever. Sure, whatever. And like, there's a dude in a coma who's just a vegetable, and he's like, now would it be you know unethical for me to move this man's you know uh, a dying person's consciousness into this body that can't do anything? And, yeah. You know, blah blah blah. 
it's that room from the video and this dude just laid out in a bed and you hear Patrick Stewart like, hello, Moira. And like, that's the end of Charles? the credits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, whatever. Which, if you had a later movie and if you really want to be true to canon in the next movie, <laughs> Benicio Del Toro as a walking Charles Xavier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> but it would, but the, thing, the weird thing is his, his voice is, it would be voiced by Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. would be creepy as fuck. I would love it. <laughs> that would be, wow, you couldn't look away of that. <laughs> And meanwhile, Cyclops is still dead forever. Dead oh, for, yeah. Dead forever. Oh, yeah. Dead forever. Mm. Um, well, that's because it's weird. In one of those, I think it's that second Wolverine movie, like, he bumps into Magneto at the airport or something. At the <laughs> yeah. End. I don't remember what's going on, but, like, Patrick Stewart's in one of those, too. And yeah, they, he, no, I think he's the, he, he bumps into Patrick Stewart at the airport, I think. Oh, it's not Magneto? No, I think it's, it's Patrick it's, Stewart. Yeah, and it's just like, well, how's he there? Yeah, and I guess maybe they'll address that in this upcoming third Wolverine movie if you ever get that. No, I mean I think that the to- the the timeline who's dead, who's not. I mean, like again, uh, Days of Future Past kind of fixes that, but not really. But so that I mean, it erases X Men Origins, it erases Wolverine in Japan. That yeah. movie that I actually kind of like. Yeah, I thought that was okay. okay. Um, so yeah, I guess if it's all gone, none of that matters. Hey, none well, of this matters. It's all that time travel, which eventually just confuses your audience enough to be like, this is how it is now. If you need <laughs> us to explain it, it's really mathy. Bill Duke turned into Peter Dinklage. Just deal with it. <laughs> just roll with it. <laughs> but would anybody recommend this movie? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I, I still think it's, I mean, it's, it's just so like choppy and it's not the worst movie you've ever seen in your life. It's totally like kind of fun if you like these characters because they do some stuff but if you actually really care about the characters it's a it's a it's a it's a no and i really do care about the characters so it's a no well i would uh say no as well but Ooh. you know maybe it might be i could see it being like a hangover movie i think it's a hangover movie and a half yeah. i really do because you can be passing out on the couch and waking up and you're like ah, oh, there are some people i know and then fall back asleep there like there, there are some people are doing stuff just don't wake up when they're like in the woods doing nothing <laughs> yeah. you know make sure you're asleep for that part <laughs> i also think like since then there have been so many terrible superhero movies that by comparison now in 2016 looking back i thought it was better than i originally uh, uh thought it was that's I thought totally fair it's i'm like now overall it's not as terrible as some other movies yeah but it also suffers that like my hopes were so high at the end of x2 yeah. and i was like we're gonna blow this thing out and it was such a disappointment I mean, that's you bring up a great point because, like, I think about fucking Age of Ultron, man, and I'm like, I don't know. I think X Men: The Last Stand is better than Age of Ultron. Really? That I, movie's I, a fucking mess, man. I, I never need to see that movie again. I thought it was better than the first one because I hated the fucking first one. But okay, so yeah, I remember that you didn't like the first one. But do you think the first Avengers is better or worse than this movie? Um. That's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, the tweets we're getting right. No, I, 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 I actually like Age of Ultron a lot for some reason. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but I liked it. I, could, you like those farm scenes? No. <laughs> Where they're just hanging oh, out yeah, on the that farm was for a while. Yeah, that was and then Raphael's part... dead in the bathtub? No, that's <laughs> Turtles 1. <laughs> the best part of Age of Ultron for me was fucking with the obese security guard that fell asleep sitting next to me in the theater. <laughs> I kept kicking the bar in front of me to wake him up. <laughs> That's X-Men, The Last Stand from 2006, directed by Brett Ratner, not Brian Singer. For more We Hate Movies, check out whmpodcast.com or sideshownetwork.tv. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We are at whmpodcast and right into the mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Rate and review the show wherever you get it. We would greatly appreciate it. Next week, the summer blockbuster extravaganza continues with, uh, what are we doing? Speed 2. Speed 2, yeah. colon, cruise control. That's a, that's a movie that misses its original star like nobody's business. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's a lot of like, where's Poochie? Where's Poochie? <laughs> Wouldn't this movie be better if Keanu Poochie was here? Absolutely. <laughs> so until next week with Jason Patrick and Willem Dafoe, I'm Andrew Jupin, Steven Sadak, Eric Siska, Sean Weiner. Take it easy. Here's Juggy.